Rick Froberg was a titan, a legend, a fierce tornado of alley cat wail and unparalleled artistic sensibility. It's hard to believe he's actually gone. I first heard Drive Like Jehu roughly about a year after they broke up. Uh, Yang Crime pretty much changed my world, and I spent so much time trying to rip off all the cool guitar stuff that him and John did on that record, failing miserably, and basically coming up with my own stuff instead. I was devastated because here was this band that was my favorite record, my favorite everything, everything I ever wanted from a band. And I missed it. And not even by a lot. I, I just missed it because I, I I didn't know. I just didn't know. That's it. So therefore it meant so much to me that when they got back together again, they the first thing they, when they got back together they played this band shell in San Diego. They had this organ built into the band shell. And there was this weird one off thing and nobody kinda nobody knew what was gonna happen. Nobody knew what it was. And we went down there. We drove down to San Diego. I was still in Oakland at the time. I made a weekend of it. And I had the weird experience of sitting in a park with, you know, a couple thousand people or whatever, however many people there were. Hundreds, thousands. It seemed like tens of thousands to me, but you know how that goes. And just everybody's like, what is this going to be? What is this going to be? I don't know. And I probably told this story better on this show uh, when it happened, but. Uh, yeah, I got to see Drive Like Jehu, and that was amazing. That was incredible to me. And then later, they did like a proper reunion tour, and there was a show in the S- in the Independent in SF that it was pretty much like a convention of people and bands. <laughs> but I mean that in a good way. And uh, they were even better. They were somehow even better. It was it was so amazing and. I went up to Rick after the show. It just, you know, could not have been cooler. Uh, more of a awesome guy. And, you know, without fanboy now, just expressed my admiration for everything they did and that I thought they sounded even better than last time. The first thing he asked me is, like, are you coming to the show tomorrow? <laughs> Which was in San Jose. And uh, I was like, well... I wasn't planning on it. I do that drive every day for work. And he's like, come down, come down. I'll put you on the guest list. That was his exact words. And I was like, okay, Rick Froberg from Man of One of My, a couple of my favorite bands. <laughs> I'll go down and see Drive Like Jehu again. This band I never thought I would see even once. And I knew him because he, he did the album art for the second Code of Neutron, the Secret Friends record, The Art of Murder. Which is a process. I started hassling him about doing art for me, I don't know, like six, seven years before that. Something along those lines. It, it was, I was asking him to do this for a while. And he's like, yeah, 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 we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. And then it, we didn't, right? That, that would, That's the, 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 we didn't. And I wanted him to do the, do a record cover for me. He did. It was great as everything I ever wanted to be. That was awesome. I actually asked him, like, hey, can I make a sticker of this? I really, I like this artwork so much. I think it'd make a cool sticker and make a cool sticker and t-shirt. He's like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. I'll, uh, I'll make a unique design for you. Okay, cool. No problem. And that really didn't happen. I got busy. He got busy. I got busy again. He got busy again. Every year or so, we would sort of check in and, and I'd be like, hey, you still want to do that thing? He's like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. Just, just, just hassle me about it later. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool. So fast forward to last year, <laughs> so fall of 2022, where he's like, hey, we should do that thing. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sounds good. And he did another great design, which is the the commuter uh, artwork for Conan Neutron, the Secret Friends. Fantastic stuff. Just, I mean, I just, I'm such a big fan of like everything he did with his art, be it for other bands or for uh, you know his own bands, and just couldn't be exa- happier about it. And that wasn't even that long ago, which is so crazy. But it took that long 
took from 2016 to 2022 <laughs> to get that. And it all kind of existed in present tense for him. Like, you could, you could tell that, like, he remembered, but he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got to take care of that. So funny. I mean, it, it wouldn't have mattered so much to me if, like, it, his bands, not just Jehu, but Hot Snakes also, didn't mean so much to me. They're just some of my favorite bands. I still recall, I was an early adopter for Hot Snakes. A friend of mine who lives in San Diego characterized it as this. The Drive Like Jehu guys have a new band, and it kind of sounds like the Wipers, who were one of my favorite bands at the time. And I, I was like, this could not possibly be any more for me. And so I saw them a lot. I think I saw them every every time they played the Bay Area. I think I saw them. Hot Snakes. And it was it was great. It was, it was always good. And then... That was over. Didn't really understand why. Uh, and that was a shame because I, I was like, oh, they were a great live band. They were great. All the records are great, too. You know, oh, it's a, such a shame. And then they came back and they somehow were better. They somehow were even better than they were before. You know, just, just propulsive, like all of the propulsiveness of Jehu, but none of like what are the. Um, I guess the the proggy parts that are kind of like off putting to uh, lots of people, but just an, just an incredible rock and roll band, like everything I, you you want from a rock and roll band, for, from my perspective. And I saw them a bunch after that too, and they, and they were always great. One time I saw them in Milwaukee, so this is after I lived in Milwaukee. And Tony and I and Cone Neutron Secret Friends were going on a tour for the single series we were doing, and the vinyl had been delayed and delayed. <laughs> And it was ready, finally, right in time for the tour to start, but we had to go pick it up. But Hot Snakes were playing. We didn't want to miss Hot Snakes. So we saw this, this show, Mad Planet, in, in Milwaukee, and it was absolutely amazing, uh, top to bottom. <laughs> it was uh, I, one, one of the best rock and roll shows I've ever seen. Frankly, not just greatest hot snake show of which I'd seen probably a dozen times, but just one of the best shows I've ever seen. And which is good because we had to drive all night to Cleveland, Ohio to pick up these seven inches, two of them, and then drive back just to go on stage and, and play, which is insane. That's some stuff that's insane if you're like 22, let alone if you're my age and uh but i i dare say that at least the first third of that trip was just powered on pure adrenaline and energy from how great that show was and a lot of that had to do with rick because he was like i said he was a, just a he had that big alley cat energy and i say that as a huge fan as someone that is either a bad singer that sings well sometimes or a good singer that frequently sings bad either one I, i'm not great and there's a lot of us that aren't great, but we try to make up for it with the passion of what we're saying. And there was something about Rick's voice that just was, it's, was so great. It just gets you, gets you right down to the bone. Like you can, it's like, this is a man that means it. And that's the case, whether it be Jehu, whether it be Hot Snakes, Pitchfork, um, Obits, people f sleep on Obits all the time. Besides all of that, and besides my personal interactions, the guy made a lot of music that was like really important to me and a lot of people that are important to me. And there's something to be said for something like that and the level of connection that that makes with people. It matters. It all matters. And it, there's something to be said also for when it's someone like a Frick, Rick Froberg that, you know, isn't like a household name. Isn't, isn't isn't like a you know a good a Jimi Hendrix or Neil Young or or whatever. It's on us to remember them. If you are one someone that cares, I've been thinking about that more and more. I thought about it a lot the past couple of years. I was pretty honored that I got him to agree to be on Protonic Reversal. He doesn't do that a lot, but he knew it was me. He knew that you know. It, I don't know if he would heard the show or not, but like he he knew it was you know wouldn't be a waste of his time. It was a big deal for me, and I I was 
He didn't have to do that. It's a fun conversation. It's kind of all over the damn place. <laughs> to be real, like it's, it became very apparent early on that it was just going to be like, okay, this is going to be like Mr. Toad's wild ride to a certain degree. Because uh, he is a talker. Like he didn't even consider himself a talker. And I get it. If you're in a band with John Reese, like he's, you know, John, he's, he's, he's great at being the face, right? Incredibly talented guy. But Rick Froberg was a good talker. And, you know, whether he's, he was talking about his love for Wire and seeing them and like, you know, small shows and stuff like that. Or whether he was talking about various records or um, uh, or art. There's a bunch of like ripoff artists that were like posting up like uh, his art and like selling t-shirts and stuff from it. Uh, really, like that had just happened like I think the day before I talked to him. So that's like pretty forefront uh, on the forefront of his mind at the time. But, you know, it's a freewheeling conversation. Uh, you know, so we talk about these punk rock t-shirt bootleggers. We talk about Metallica <laughs> a lot. I'm in shock, and I continue to be in shock, and it sucks that he's gone. We lost a very certain kind of legend with Rick Froberg, and I, I fear that we shall not see his likes again. So anyway, that that's enough of my, my jibber-jabber. Hell of a front man, hell of a vocalist, hell of a guitar player, hell of a visual artist. And, uh, yeah, this this is episode 237 with Rick Froberg. Rest in power, brother. Froberg. Rick, welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for doing uh, this. Thank you. Let's talk about that. Uh, there's some kind of newsworthy you know, uh, stuff going on here with the uh, people bootlegging stuff, dude. What's, go- what's going on with this? How did this come to your Oh, attention? okay. So this, is, so this is just like, okay, so this is something to talk about. Um, all right. So like somebody, whatever, DM'd me, a couple people DM'd me on, um, on Instagram saying, hey, check this out. And it's like this like this, this sort of uh, basically the Drive Like Jehu gang crime cover, but it says creamy ink. <laughs> what? I thought, I thanked the guy. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I, I was like, yeah, what else is new? It's, this happens all the time. It's like, uh, you, get, you, get, you get sick things like that. It's like, it's like it's something that's even worth dealing with. Then I like did a search. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like so many, so everyone, just everyone is getting knocked off. And just, and it's just these people who are just, it's just so cynical and awful. They're just, they're just taking these people's band names and their art and just making money off it. And like, and the people who, did all this work at nothing, and it's like musicians aren't having a great time right now. It's like it's not like this is a this is a right. great time to be like you know leeching off us. It's just it's just uh, it's not cool, and it's just it's it's it's, it's everybody. It's so many people that are doing this too. It's just it's insane. Yeah, I mean, and it's doubly insulting to be yeah creamy ink, where it's like very clearly the the ink blotter uh, yank crime. Uh, just for, for those. Well, at least they changed it a little bit. The, I mean, the, the other stuff, but I, I looked up this drive by Jehu, and it yeah. was like, it was just like shirt after shirt after shirt after face mask. After, this, none of this stuff has anything to do with us. Yeah, yeah. We have, we have, you have, we have like a shop where you can go buy stuff, and the band gets like not a dime from many of this. You don't get anything. And it's like, and, then, and they have all these, and you look at the site, and, and it says like created by blah, 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 blah. And it's like always a different name. I bet you it's like three screen printing companies or something like that who are yeah. doing all this. And, and, I don't know. I just, I just thought that's just, it's just so lame. <laughs> and, and, it is. Yeah. And that's my people. That's my people getting ripped off. It's like, it's not this. It's not, you know. It's, you know, I definitely don't want to get ripped off. I don't want people making money off stuff that we can make money off of. I don't think that's cool at all. No. So, we need the money in order to continue doing this. You know, with nothing coming in. Well, so it's, get... just, it's, it, it's, it's like it's, it's just right now, especially. Maybe it's just I need something to be angry at. That's, that's, that's <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, but that's pretty infuriating because it's not just like they're even doing it this one time. It's like they're just ripping off all these designs and passing off of, as their own work. And that's, I mean, there's a word for that. <laughs> you know, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, theft. I mean, it's theft. It's what, it's what it is. It's like, yeah. it's, it's a... Uh... But the thing that really made me mad about it is like, it's like, well, lots of things made me mad about it. But what makes me mad is, is that you go to their site... And there's like this, this whole, it's not arcane, but this stupid process you have to go through to like, to sort of like 
you know, disputes that this and, and infringement or whatever. It's like, it's like, like, no, no, take it down. It's like, it's like, do I have to go to each, each one of these sellers and be like, you know, we're going to come break your legs. Take, take this, take this stuff down. It's, it's right. like, like in order to get satisfaction, you have to kind of deal with like the wild west of the internet. Well, it's, 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 it's like it, the onus is on you to prove that it's your artwork. Right. It's like, exactly. no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, what the hell is that? It's, it's just, yeah, we're selling this. We didn't ask you. We just we're just selling. It. Oh, prove it, cheers. I give it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like that's, what, that's why I kept mentioning Peter Grant. Yeah, he's yeah. like the you know the famous Led Zeppelin manager who would who would just go in there with a cricket bat and start like smashing things, and then that would be that. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he he, he it's, pays it's you like, visit one time and you don't you don't want a second time. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to sound like a fascist or anything like that, but I just I just don't I just. I just think this is just such a bureaucratic nightmare of nincompoopery. It's just like, so you can think of just, oh, I was, was going to rip people off, you know, and make money off of them. Well, because that's, that's not cool. Yeah, well, especially because it's, you know, okay, so, you know, do you think they'd be able to pull this off if they were like ripping off like the Coke logo or something along those lines? No, you know, they they wouldn't try to pull that off. But it's like, oh, they're probably like, oh, well, they sure. You know. Well, they might try to pull it off, and somebody would, and somebody would be like cease and desist. Like yeah. they'd be Coke of Coke beyond it. Like they think Disney or Coke or maybe you know like Metallica or something like that. I don't know. The people are vigilant about that stuff, and they. Um, I didn't see any minor threat uh, merchandise up there. By the way, I saw, I looked. I saw stuff that was like alluded to minor threat, and like you know. Close my or whatever that's even thing. Um, something you know, stuff like their slogans or their lyrics or whatever, but there was no their presence, there was they, they didn't have a presence there, so it makes me think that like Ian is like, uh uh-uh. <laughs> you know? right. exactly. He's just, he just like, yeah, this is just he's he's what do you think you're doing here because uh, that's not happening, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> which. Uh, but that leads into like an, kind of an interesting point, right? Because with punk rock and stuff, you don't you don't exactly think of the words punk rock and copyright law <laughs> being hand in hand. But it's I mean this it is this is literally someone stealing like iconic art, iconic art, and taking away money from the people that actually you know need it right now. Yeah, as, as and you mentioned. That, this stuff it's not even iconic art. It's stuff like it's like bad posture T-shirt, you know, bad posture, like or sin thirty four like. Bands like this, like that are like, right. it's just like it's just like throwing, you know, throwing the proverbial poop at the wall to see what sticks or whatever. They just like just, just doing it. It's like I don't know. Maybe they even do it in order or something. I'm, I'm not sure if you can like you know, oh, we're gonna print up like you know two thousand Sin Thirty Four shirts. I mean, I don't know what they do. I don't know what their business model is, but it's like it's just it's just lame. And like, bet the guys from Sin Thirty Four could use a little money. <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. I mean, yeah, they're not exactly high rolling, right? <laughs> uh-uh. They're probably like real estate agents or something. I don't know. But like, it's just, uh, yeah, just something that gets my goat. Right? And I think that uh, I would like, I would, I would like it to get. That's why, I like, in the post or whatever, I put like at 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 at. I don't, I don't know if I got all the actual Instagram handles right. This right. one, I'm like, you should see this. I mean, think about this. It's it's just like it's lame, man. It's 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 uh it should be it should be stopped. Not just just be, just because we don't need to get ripped off anymore. We're all getting already getting ripped off, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of one of those things that there's not a lot of ambiguity to this. Like that, what like what's the other side of this argument? There's no moral mm-hmm. ambiguity, but there might be legal ambiguity. Yeah, it, it's it's like I, that's. We want to yeah. do whatever we want to do. We want to steal. Well, we're stealing because because we can and because you know you know I understand, man. You got to make some money. I get, I get it. It's like yeah. that's that's a and if you can, I, you know, this is America, man. You got to you got to do. But like, <laughs> but you know, you're our enemies, and we're going to take you down because because we want the money. Right. That's our money. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it's, it's it's basically just an economic. They're probably just placing the, you know, ma- making kind of like an internal bet that either, you know, the band won't notice or if they do, they won't be able to do anything without to stop them. And the bet's been paying off, man, because you look at that site and it's like, how is this here? How, how, how I mean, how is there a site where you, you can just, just like, I'm sure that's not the only site, by the way. I'm sure there's lots of yeah. examples of this all over the place. But like, but this was so brazen and the scale of it was just so amazing to me. It was just like, it was like, Everyone getting knocked off. I mean, 
you name it. They're, they're, I mean, it's like, I look, I, I, there was a few things I couldn't find. I like, oh, shoot, this is a thermos. Most things I looked up, I could find. Yeah. And it's like, Phew. and yeah, okay, it's, you know, a 13th floor elevator shirt, they probably don't print those anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, if you're going to do that, you should at least figure out who owns the estate of that or whatever or is left and like hey you know like make 34 other t-shirts that's cool we'll cut you in that's all you have to do well and it's interesting to me that there's like so there's the creamy ink one right and there's ones that right. also just say drive like jehu <laughs> in crime so it's like you, you well that's 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 the cream the creamy ink one is like is like okay well fine yeah that's, that sucks that's, but okay. it's dumb it's dumb <laughs> yeah i don't i don't understand that's, that's and also creamy ink. It's, it's like it's like one of those words like moist or something. It's like, it's, it, has a, it has it has this. It just sounds terrible. It's like it's why would anybody buy a t-shirt with creamy ink on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe like Japanese people or something like that who didn't really understand what I meant. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's it's a uh, it's just really strange. Um, well, but yeah, the the, the 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 really bad thing is the actual band merch where they actually just take the cover, which is like the easiest cover in the world to like. It's just basically line art. <laughs> like, yeah. And then you just make a t-shirt out of it. And like, and uh, apparently there's people who still like drive like you out there and they'll buy them. So, yeah. Well, and, I, and it's like, I love we should a, get the money. Uh, of all money. the ones that are, that are in there too, uh, one of them is the wipers, as if Greg Sage mm -hmm. hasn't freaking been ripped off enough. You know? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's, there's so many, it's, it's everybody. It's everybody. Yeah. It's every, on, on like, unless, it, Probably even like Bruce Springsteen is getting ripped off there. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's just, how is this, I just think, how is this not, how is this okay? <laughs> I don't get <laughs> yeah. it. It's like, I just don't understand. Like, how do you justify it? I guess it's just like, you know, I don't know. Because we can, no one tells us we couldn't. <laughs> Which is like, all right. But, well, again, this is, this is America. This, that's, how, this is how it works. But like, just like, it's, it's just, it's just like we're all getting ripped off by these people. Yeah. And I understand, yeah, I try to make a buck, whatever, cool. But fuck you, that's our money. It's that's pretty much all that's that's pretty that's pretty much the all I really want to say about it. But I would like to bring it to people's attention. You know, and it's not, like, the, not the spirit of activism, but in the spirit of not getting ripped off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're, don't, you're don't, off. don't give these guys Right. Don't don't just, give these guys. It's purely it's purely like this is bullshit. Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, so that that that's actually a decent place to start. Like that's a you know again I, I said it's an iconic album cover and I, and I mean it. Um, how'd you come up with the idea for that one? Because that's a, for the, of course for the second J Who record, not the self title. I remember exactly what I was doing. I was I was walking along the shores of uh, Lake Del Dios, and uh, which is kind of in uh, northern San Diego County, sort of peaceful place, mm -hmm. looking at the lake, and the idea the idea of the, the ink bottle just came to me, and I just went and drew it. It took the whole art the whole process took probably fifteen minutes. And then, and uh, I did a, I did a few different ones and I and they're all lousy and they all look kind of like you know like Raymond Pettibone. Um, but I was like, eh, that's cool. <laughs> that didn't that didn't bother me. <laughs> so, so that's uh, it just I just uh, I just drew the picture and I like cheap sketch paper and a bunch of times and that, that was the one I liked best. And I put the uh, I just wrote right by you with a marker, just taped it down and that was it. And that's the cover. I mean, and it's it. I think it rules because it's something that um, it's almost like I, I heard a it's a podcast or something. They were talking about what makes a good flag, like a state flag or a oh, city flag. Oh, I love flag. flags. I yeah. love flags. I love them a lot. And I don't like. I don't like you know. I don't like wave one, but I but I, I like. Right. Them. <laughs> but well, I like them. Well, and one of the criteria is that like it. Uh, and I can't remember. I'm gonna butcher this, but but it was something along the lines of like, yeah, a kid should be able to draw it with a marker and a piece of paper. And I was like, oh yeah, well, that's most flags, right? Well, I mean, but they well these city flags a lot of times they'll like state flags. There's some state flags that are like yeah, they put a bunch of nonsense Maine in Maine or whatever. It's like a, and they, they drop it's like a blue field and they drop the uh, all the graphics which are complicated right into the middle of the flag, which is just enormous. It's just like why don't you blow up, why don't you blow up the graphic a little or something? Um, it's just a funny. It's like, how did you actually make those flags back when, before there was like digital printing and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it, it, not, it, it totally fails. Plus, that they, revert, they, 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 they reverse, and they have sometimes they have letters on them. Right. They have, they have, and so what happens when they reverse? So it's backwards. It's totally, it's, it's totally weird. 
So 50% of the time you see this flag, it's, it's backwards. And then they'll put like words all over it too. And like, just, hmm. <laughs> there's all kinds of just yeah, weird. That's what I'm like, saying. It's like, it's like, it's like, it just doesn't kind of come. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? <laughs> what's, what's your favorite flag? And, and part of that's almost like a, you know, it, it, it seems like it's designed by committee or something, right? Well, I'm sure it is. What's, what's your personal favorite uh, national flag? I mean, I like all the simple ones, you know, like, uh, but like France has got a good one. It's like, Hey, here's, here's the colors, right? Uh, there's the one the tricolor. Yeah. That's a, that's a, anything, anything that's a like, good one. It's a good one. You can Looks immediately good. be like, Oh, I, like Japan, Japan. That's a freaking great flag. Are you kidding that's me? That's a great flag. I haven't liked the Bangladesh one where it's, where it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, that same flag only the, the background is green, which is, which is even more like I, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost looks like a, uh, one of those, um, uh, cause it's a green, it's a green and red, right? So it's almost like one of those. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, it's, it's like uh, almost like a shitty olive green or something. I mean, it's like a dark green, but it, it, it really, really pops. It's like a, it, it's a, it makes your eyes vibrate yeah. like that. Yeah. I'll take that over something that has like a whole bunch of text and like a, you know, a freaking text is usually not a national flag though. That's, that's just too complicated. Yeah. Like text is all, I can only think of text on like state flags or like ancient standards or whatever right i think I, what's like you know my one of my favorite ones is the turkish flag i think that one looks really good don't they ha isn't uh, there the one that's got that star on the it's a star and crescent yeah, 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 yeah white yeah, star yeah, yeah. crescent on a red field it's the most, most most beautiful flag i was going to color color, color red blue, but, so I, I also like the swiss flag i like the uh israeli flag the greek flag is really great um, the Nazi flag is really great. <laughs> That's a really good flag. Yeah, as far as like flags go, it's, yeah. It's far, as far as, I mean, it looks really good. Um, the was it Albania that has like the two-headed like eagle looking thing? That's too complicated for me. I like I like oh yeah, I like the Estonian flags. I like the cover colors. They're they're white, like royal blue and black, it just and and they're uh, horizontal. And, and it's, it's a great flag. I don't know why it just looks. Think, ah, nice. This country must be nice. There's, is it like, a, is Angola the one with the fork, where it looks like a pitchfork or something, where there's like a, a, you know like a trident, of? like a trident? Yeah, the trident. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, it looks like uh, Aquaman's uh, freaking weapon or something. <laughs> I'll look it up. And go. The Jamaica one's cool because it's um like an X. And oh, like, like the Angola flag is actually awesome. Yeah, Sorry yeah. To um, it's awesome. Ooh. That's a heavy flag. Yeah. It's like, it's like the straight up like, FSNL, FSLN or whatever flag. Like it's like just red bar, black bar, and this must be a communist country. They're like, and, and it's like a half of a of a, a cog or a sprocket or whatever you call it. Teeth, yeah. half for the crescent, then the star, and the thing coming through the, the crescent, which is the cog, is a machete. And it's clearly a machete. Are you kidding me? Really? That's awesome. <laughs> that's a heavy flag, man. <laughs> that's it's a, a machete. That's a tough Dude, flag. That's, 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 that's like, woof. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's like, you don't mess with Angola, man. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, exactly. To make a statement without saying a word, you know? Mm. <laughs> you know exactly what's up immediately. Wow, that's yeah. great. Uh, so, anyway, what, yeah, what I was driving at that is that, like, I think that the uh, Yankram cover... Yeah, you know, it's so it, it's so simple, but it's it's like easily reproducible. Well, that's the idea, and, it was, and it's, I was trying to make an icon. And yeah. the idea to me, the idea to me was a cool idea. I thought it was an iconic idea. So so so, and that's all it needed. And like, I also wanted because the music is so it's a lot to ask people to sit and listen to Drive by Jay record. I think, and it's like I just wanted to make it less just let you know say it with lead, you know, not with like a bunch of packaging. Just, yeah, I just wanted. To, just wanted to make it really, really, really simple. I, I, I mean, I'm really into packaging and all on every level, and I think that um, a lot of my favorite record covers are, are really not technically good artwork at all. They just, they just make the, you know, make the record, make the record look like it's going to be a good record. You know what I mean? Like it's just, so just some things do that, some and some things really don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Some sometimes it's like the record cover almost like keeps you away from <laughs> from listening to it, and you're like, oh wait, this was good in spite of that. Yeah, there's 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 records that are that, are, um, that I actually think that actually the cover were like, oh. the uh, one of one example would be um, the Moving Targets, Burning in Water. Have you ever heard that record? No, no, I don't know that one. 
Oh, dude, this is a great record. It's okay. a great record. They're from Boston, and then I think it came out in like 1985 or something like that. Record, Burning Water. I'm looking at. Oh yeah, that sucks. <laughs> there's, well, there's two versions. There's 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 a, there's a there's a there's one that they had before was a, was a photo they didn't get the rights for, so they, they had to like take it off, and then they're like uh, pick the, the pretty much the most che- the shittiest like snapshot of of the guitar player and put it on the on the front and like kind of carved out yeah like like uh, punk rock like, uh lettering like each other had a stat camera they had access to a stat camera and they got the you know and they just and they just kind of cut it was just the most to me now now i'm looking back on it it's so lousy though that i actually think wow this is kind of awesome actually <laughs> it's, like I mean, it's so really, bad it starts becoming good again it's just the it's just like it's just like oh my god no wonder no one's fucking with this record because, <laughs> and it's, it's it's really good record it's every song it's like Every song is good. It's like uh, I don't. It's listen to it. It's really, really good. But yeah, I mean, it, it sometimes it can it can like you know tell a story or, and like kind of draw you in, like be mysterious and sort of like, oh wow, what's that sound like? Oh, let's check that out. And sometimes it's like, ugh. <laughs> like even like even like Marky Moon, right? Is is that a great album cover? I don't know. I think you know it's interesting. It's sort of like oh. What's up with yeah, these guys? I think it's a great. I think it's a great. I think it's a great yeah. record for sure. Absolutely. And the I font think. of just like the uh, you know the not no serifs like like above on the yeah, top. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's interesting. I think this is exactly what they they were trying to say. And also the music is also kind of the whatever the the push and pull between this really simple image yeah. and and the per, really pretty lush and uh, complicated music or whatever is is kind of a, it works good. I think a lot of times that that's a a pretty easy trick to go for if you're doing like you know no oh, my band my band are really wild and crazy so then you try to tone it down with the artwork or so almost make you yeah, more minimal or something like uh, yeah, I mean, to generate kind of tension between the two things you know, totally so. yeah like and, and <laughs> but sometimes but then sometimes it's totally the wrong thing to do like I mean you know I don't like look at a funkadelic record or something like that it's, it's like some guy with markers <laughs> strong like on drugs drawing like just whatever he wanted to and like. It's and it, and, it, and it definitely helps the record sound good for some reason. Well, and there's there's a you know and there's such a fine line. I mean, think of like fresh fruit for rotting vegetables, right? It's like it's like mm-hmm. with with the uh, almost uh, as an mm-hmm. old English, you know, like the mm-hmm. that, that font and like in lesser hands. Great cover, such a great cover. It sucks so bad in lesser hands, but like it works so well for that record. The fact that you know, and, all, and also and also it is the Dead Kennedys. And you yeah. know, it's the Dead Kennedys, so right. it's like you kind of you kind of know. It just it just works it really works i actually i like i like i like, I like, I like man winston smith that was the guy who did him um winston smith he, yeah yeah he did a uh, in god we trust that one right is that what's called oh yeah with the the money with the cross the, 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 yeah. Yeah. you know like super great um and, and the and fucking um plastic surgery disasters is a really good cover um franken christ is a really good cover yep um, the last one, Bedtime for Democracy, I didn't think I had a good cover on that. It's like kind of a drawing. It was, it was kind of too flippant, I think. Yeah, that's the one that's like, it's like a cartoon, but it's um like, it's it's like Statue yeah, of Liberty. Yeah, like I, I can't remember it. Yeah, stuff. stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, eh, it's like, damn, eh, punk or whatever. The only thing I remember is the color scheme, because it's like blue and red, if I remember correctly, on the, on the, on the logo. Mm. And the rest of it was like, eh, whatever. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I mean, it's them, and they're amazing. Yeah, I mean the music is good. Don't get me wrong, but just as as far as you know, judging it. I, I, I got. I got to be honest with you. I don't think I've ever really sat and listened to Bedtime for Democracy. Um, I really? Climbed my yeah. Now I think like I cut off my they kind of use that the first it's like <laughs> yeah, every band, I mean, the first two records. It's like every fucking band. But like um, yeah, the first two records. Is, it's hard uh, to get excited about you know Rambozo when you can just you know kill the poor and. <laughs> So it's, it's it's good. It's you know it's fine. It's, it's just a, it's just a little. The, the problem with that, that all this stuff is just it's a little too topical and it dates it in this weird yeah. way. That um that's the problem with like you know when you're playing music or whatever. Like you write songs about stuff that's going on now, and if you get too specific about that, it's it's going to sound dated in ten years. It's going to sound like oh yeah, and it, and, it, and that makes it that means it's only going to be good again when it's nostalgia. So it's like you kind of want to. 
not date yourself so much by being super specific about things. Well, and that's, again, going back to Yankram, I think it's one of the reasons why that's such a cool album cover, because it just, it kind of looks out of time. You know, like, I remember when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of is like, oh, it's kind of almost like Raymond Pettibone or something, but like very minimal. Oh, yeah, like way, almost like, I mean, it's like way like that. And I, I mean, the thing is, here's the thing about Raymond Pettibone, I think, is like, okay, he uses brush and India ink. Okay, mm-hmm. that's on the table for everyone. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have like, a copyright on that. There's, exactly. there's, there's no, there's no. I mean, everyone can do, everyone can do this. This is like, this has been, people have been doing this for thousands of years. It's like, so I didn't feel bad that, yes, it does look like Raymond Pettibon. Yeah. I also didn't feel bad because I love Raymond Pettibon. Yeah, I mean, and Jesus. I'm happy to it. And, and it was, I, I, I forget, to, you, know, you know, I'm alluding to him, or, and it's a tribute or a, an, inf, uh, an inspiration. That's, that's, but, it, but, it is, but it is, yeah, it does look like that. But it's it's like in this from like the same school of not not like uh you know so to speak not literally uh, not like that it's like a rip off or anything along those lines at all. Mm-mm. It was just I had no other frame of reference of. No, it's not, I don't. It's not. It's, I don't. It's definitely it's definitely a rip off. But it isn't. It's inspired by it very much for yeah. sure. And, and um, I don't know. That's just that's just that's just the way that, that thing came out. So what was what was what all was going on with Jehu at that time? Because I I got into you guys kind of too late. Like by the time I sort of found out i mean i lived in the central valley i didn't you know like there was central the valley internet. where's that but what uh of where of what, central valley of what? Uh, california right? so sacramento oh. stockton oh. modesto okay. fresno okay where where once one of these cities you live in i lived in modesto so i i i knew modesto. from like wow. sonic youth i knew from fugazi <laughs> i know dude and, and, and no, like, no 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 it's just it's, it's california california is really an amazing place because it's so so big and there's so many there's places so much like, of it yeah I've been through Modesto, but like I just I'm trying to, uh, what would it be like living in Modesto? It's it's kind of like Iowa in a lot of ways or something. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Sure. Like Nebraska, because sure. it's, it's, agri- it's, it's all ag- else. It's agriculture. Yep. And it's like yeah, it's like living in small town America. Well, and really especially is. pre-internet as we know it, like you know, we had to go up to the Bay Area to get you know, to go shop for records or CDs. Actually, let's be era specific. You could go to like Davis or Chico or. Well, they, something but like they that. didn't have the ones we were looking for because the thing is, we were like, you know, we were super into oh, like Sonic right. back Youth. Be, back before you had to, you, right? Back before like, you could just everything was at your fingertips. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, if you yeah, wanted to go yeah. get a Butthole Surfers album, like you had to like go up to Oakland and San Francisco to go do it. You know, like they're not going to uh, have it at Tower Records or the Warehouse. Actually, if we're going to be air right. specific. Totally. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, but, but it's, the, like, it's yeah. Good. Oh, I was just gonna say. So by the time I got into uh, and I and I got Yan Cram first, I got that before I got self titled. I was like, oh fuck yeah, these guys are awesome. Oh yeah, they just broke up. Oh man, goddamn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and I and I That's I missed. I think I, I I think I missed you guys by like six months or so. like because you you played with um, um, Great American Music Hall. I think was the last uh, the first one of Jay like Drive Like Jehu, if I remember correctly. I remember, I remember the, I remember playing there. Um, uh, I don't. It's like. A lot of it's a little blurry to me, so I don't really know. Some people are really good with this, and like uh, if you talk to like Mark or something like that, he would he would yeah. probably be able to tell you specific things. Also, Mark is a sober person, <laughs> but um, <laughs> right, that helps. That does help. Yes, like yeah, Ian has yeah. like a Ian McKay, like he can remember everything from half, like forty years ago and, and stuff. Like, I know. Jesus, dude. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's like, a, do I want to remember this much? I just, like, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I remember just being like, like, I just got into it too late. You know, I just didn't know. I was like, who's that? <laughs> like, I even lived in the Bay Area at the time, but I just didn't know, which is weird. To I, I missed I miss lots of stuff, too, dude. So, I mean, uh, well, we shouldn't worry about the things we missed. We should worry about, the, uh, you know, reflect on the things we did see that were really amazing. And, like, uh, yeah, I missed a lot of stuff. I didn't, I didn't, I, I got into punk kind of late. I, I got into punk when I was, like, it's like 17 maybe okay um and i was i wasn't in metal before that but like kind of like small like la kind of like whatever all just all kinds of metal um and the first time i saw a punk band was when i saw possessed dark angel Holy shit. Um, <laughs> death and corrosion of conformity so corrosion of conformity played and uh, I went to the show, and I'd gone to like lots of thrash metal shows and glam rock shows. I've been to you know all kinds of shit, but like 
when Corrosion Capote played, I was just like, these are my people. These these guys, these guys are just like, just like, no pretense. Just like, let's do this. It's like, there's no. They seem they seem like smart people. They seem cool. So I got into punk that way. I just finally got exposed when there was a kind of metal punk crossover. I got I got exposed to the punk and I'm like, that's this is, this is definitely better than than metal. Like just the yeah, just the sort of mentality is just comfortable to me. And that's kind of got found your brand sort of moment. <laughs> I mean, my brand, but my my people. Yeah, yeah. For a minute, anyway. I mean, because because punk was was uh you know kind of kind of rotten and dangerous, and there was no girls, and it was uh and well, the band sounded the same, and it was it was it had a very it was a super hive mentality, like hardcore, but like where we lived, and like uh, so I didn't last that long with like hardcore, or you know, it just it just seemed like not free yeah you know? how'd you end up playing how you was it just like something that kind of happened naturally did you have a desire yeah. yes i had a desire but i also am lazy and um <laughs> and playing guitar means you have to learn how to play the guitar ideally yes <laughs> which is which is intimidating like that's the thing about metal it's like there's way more fans than there are you know, musicians compared to punk where everyone plays it yeah it's easy um but i didn't get into playing punk until i heard uh sonic youth like and like yeah man. and i was like i could do that and um i bought yeah i bought this great amp i bought i had, I had like a pre-cbs twin reverb that i bought for like 200 bucks off this person and i had a uh jesus <laughs> yeah i bought this stuff for cheap i had a job i bought i bought to I bought a, uh, a pre-CBS Jaguar. And I had, those, those were my, because I'd seen pictures of them giving me like Jaguars and stuff. So. And like, uh, I didn't know to tune the guitar. I just started just making like sonic easy noises. And that was really fun. My parents really didn't like it, but it was really fun. <laughs> Everyone's and, a critic. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like Drive by Jehu, like, it was my first band I played guitar in. And, and I got to say, I'm not a very good guitar player. I'm still not. Yeah. And it's like, it's just like a, to me, a guitar is like kind of like, you know, just like this, this thing, it, it, you know, that you can do something with if you want. It's just like, you just, ah, it's just like a toaster. It has a, you know, it's like, a, it's like anything. It's like, it's a tool. It's a, yeah, it's a tool. It's a, yeah, exactly. But that's exactly, it's a tool. And, uh, it's, uh, but you get to, I mean, the more you play it, the better you get at it. Um, and if you're playing all the time, you get pretty good playing it. Well, it occurred to me, I'm, I'm like, I'm glad we talked, we were talking about album covers. We talked about television because in a way, like the way uh, Verlaine and Lloyd kind of played off each other um, in a very different way is kind of how I feel about um, you and John, you know, that like. On that record? Dude, yeah. You know what? You know, it, here's the thing about Drive to It's so much more about John than it is me. This like it's like this two guitar thing. Yeah, I play guitar. I mean, but and there's some things that are like that I do that are important. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's about him. That's like that guy is that guy's what makes that band amazing. No, well, that's Mark too. Um, Mark is Mark is a really amazing drummer. He is um, very interesting. But style. like I I don't think I add that much to that band guitar wise i mean it's like it's there but if, but if, if you took my guitar away it might be better <laughs> it's, it's like because like we I mean, I, it's, it reminds me of the first jay record because we were making the first jay record and john wanted had all these like these dumb overdub overdub ideas where he's like just, just stupid stuff like i'm gonna accent the e right here right because he didn't know anything about any of it yeah. but he but he had he had he was already really into it and like uh he just it just wasn't working he got sick of it and like and then he just like got so frustrated and just threw his hands up and went out into the lobby to go to sleep or whatever. And then me and Mark were like, okay, cool. And like take get rid of all that. <laughs> so we just like, you know, tried to get rid of all that. And like uh on the Jehu record, there's some there's some songs that are really uh, You're talking about the self title one, the first one, right? No, the second one there's second, second one, second there's, one, one. Right, there's, there's 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 a bunch of stuff that's like uh you know, just, just tracks one one thing at a time. 
And there's some stuff that's like kind of not like Luau is like one of those ones that's just kind of like this pretty live. And that's yeah. it's like uh, that's kind of the best one because because you that John does that crazy. Oh man, the, the, the guitar solo thing. I, really, I, really I know the exact thing you're talking about. Like the second you said, yeah. I know the exact part, and I'm like, I actually use that as a example of like musical, uh, you know, feedback kind of noise kind of stuff. Recently, and I was like, yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty great. John is John is a fucking great guitar player. But you know, you know the you know the band you know the band that we're kind of like the band that everyone's like, oh, who, who who's drummer Jay like? <laughs> But this band we, we like is a band called Honor Roll from. Uh, oh yeah, this, no, no, I'm a big Honor Roll from, fan. From from where that that's like that's like our biggest. I think that's the biggest. But well, on him for sure. I've been so trying to like, get Penn to come on the show for forever, but he don't want to do it. Oh, keep trying, keep trying, dude. It's totally worth it. I mean, Penn is like, Penn is like the most. Dude, he's a flick. That guy's dude. unreal. That guy's a. But he's also yeah, he's just like, he's like this genius. Yeah, yeah. He's just he just he just. I don't, he's like uh, I don't play guitar anymore. I don't feel like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay. It's like, right. oh, it's like if Eddie Van Halen was like, oh, I don't feel like it. I'm not feeling it right now. I mean, I mean, he's not Eddie Van Halen. I mean, no one is, but 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 it's he's he's awesome. But he's a guitar innovator, and it's something where it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, like it, it still sounds kind of like out of time, <laughs> you know. So it's like, but he's got he's it's got just it's just killer. It's just it's just yeah. slaughters. It's like it's you know how you you know. You know, you you listen to things when you were like whatever twenty something or whatever, and like you listen to stuff like that. Like you listen to stuff like that now that I'm well, for me like now some of it doesn't hold up at all. But that 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 holds up. It's just like like the like the singles I did. Oh my god, it's, I yeah, still put them on. They give I, me goose, I, goosebumps. They're still so good. I'd love to get into it with him. Hopefully, hopefully I'll break him down mm-hmm. and get him get him on eventually. Oh, he'll break you down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, he's a smart dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, yeah, but back yeah, back over to your stuff. So, so, Yank Crime, basically, kind of more like uh, the track live situation. The what? The, you, you kind of you said you more tracked that one live rather than doing like uh, like one by one. Right? Yeah, I did a couple songs live, and we did the rest of it normal. I think like I think like that song Sinews we did live yeah. pretty pretty much live, and that and. Uh, Luau, especially the guitar solo could only be live. And that had can't even like it was. It was just like a let's see what happens kind of thing. But it's just a, it's a, it's a great moment of noise, I think, in rock and roll history. Hey, hey, totally. Had had you been playing that like before, like live a lot those songs or? Yeah, and uh, and then we're and like if you like fish out some old shows or whatever, you you could find versions of those songs that are, that are different. Like they have different lyrics or something, maybe. And like, uh, um, but once you record something, then that's the definitive version, then you play that, for yeah. more or less. There's one exception, and like, I don't know who's listening to this and who gives a shit about any of this, but like, there's what, there's more one people exception. Than you that, might imagine, let's put it that okay, way. Okay, that, that the song, this, the first song is Here Come Around Plows. That, that song, we half that song when we played it live, because it was like, it was too long. It was like, this song does not need to be. <laughs> Five minutes as long. long as it is on the record. <laughs> yeah, that, that was actually my my main issue with this band. Is like, it's like, why is this song ten minutes long? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that's it, that's that's a long time. But the thing is, as a listener, I'd be like, I don't, I don't think as a listener, I don't know. It's it's, it's really impossible for me to judge my own. It's like I'm too corrupt in the process. I'm, I'm, I have no you know, outside perspective. But like. Playing those songs is pretty fun. Just to sit there and like go. Arr, arr. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. No, what, but I mean, you're asking a lot. I mean, you're asking people. You're asking people to sit there and listen. You go. Arr, arr. And for some reason, at that time, people wanted to hear. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, not, I mean, not just that time, so but later. Out. You know, because like I said, I never got to see you the first time. So like, I went down to the first um, when you, you did the thing in the organ uh, uh, in the park. You went to that? Yeah, yeah, I went to that. I don't oh, know if we ever talked dude. about that, but I, I, I like totally. I'll talk about that. Uh, when we, when we, um, <coughs> yeah, when that was announced, I was like, I was like, hell yeah, we're gonna go. Because I didn't know if you, you know, is this ever gonna happen again? I don't know. I want to see <coughs> you guys play, uh, and it was great because I basically was, you know, sit. I've told this story on this show so many goddamn times, but this is the first time I'm telling it to somebody actually in the band of just the excitement of of being like in this organ, uh, like band shell in the park. And being with, you know, whatever, 4,000 people to just 
oh, come on, what the hell's going to happen? <laughs> like, it was so cool. It was such a neat feeling. Then when you guys came Did in, you hear the like, organ? yeah, yeah, uh, that was great. The, the, the I, I couldn't hear it. I'm glad I couldn't hear it. It, de- um, it depended it on where you were at, though. It depended on where, it, like, I moved while you guys were playing, and then I couldn't hear it at all. So it was like, kind of depend on where you were at. Yeah, that was that was that was a crazy thing. It was it was um, really neat. I, I thought it was a really neat. That's a that's a that's a wonderful little jewel in my life. And that's the only time my my parents ever ever came to see my band. Oh no, kidding! That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and because uh, they were like, what are you what are you wasting my time doing this shit? And I was like, I was like, oh, there's four thousand people here, huh? Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's a great show for them to come out to. <laughs> <laughs> and, like the show was. Good. So I kind of felt, you know, I kind of felt some, you know, vindication about my, like my path in life, um, and, and uh, even my father was impressed. And I, I don't think that he enjoyed the music, uh, <laughs> right? Because, but... because, because, let's face it, most people don't enjoy the music that we play. Most people, some people, there's a very small amount of people who do. So, but that um, was a great moment because you had all these people like myself coming from all over. You know that at that time I was just coming from Oakland, yeah, but, you know, coming so from all over cool. to be there. It was and so cool. I felt like I was in the dead or something. It was, it was like, it was really cool. Um, apparently, that was the most people who'd been in that in that space since like the World's Fair there. So, <laughs> wow. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool thing. That's super awesome. Yeah, and and, and um, you know, it was it was just great that like, you know, <laughs> like after the show, everyone was like. Hanging out because they all had this like cool communal experience. We even had like you know that, uh, you know, you may not even necessarily know someone, but like we were at a bar afterwards and just kind of yeah. struck up a conversation with some people. Like, hey, wasn't that awesome? Like, yeah, it was great. I was like, oh yeah, could you hear the organ? Uh, kind of, you know, like everyone was. <laughs> Good, kind of. That's what I wanted, kind of. That's what I was secretly hoping for was that it would be kind of, because it was like, just, just blasting organ would would have been would have just would have just would have, it seems to me like it would totally wreck the whole thing. It would like it's like. Um, what did we play? Five songs. We played long songs. Yeah, you so, played um, "If It Kills You." You played uh, "Luau." Um, I'm trying to remember what. I mean, this is a long. Do you compute? Ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, it, yeah. I played, we put all those. We put kind of like the longer, more epic ones, so the organ could be in. Or but that worked yeah. because it was. Uh, it lent itself to that venue. Right, of like that video of like being yeah, like, you know, no, 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 air. no, exactly, exactly. It was, it was very clear that we had to play songs that had space and that, and that had dynamics in them because if you just started bashing away at something like people would turn to Vegas or something like that, it would, yeah. it would, uh, it would just, it would just sound like a mess. And, it, it wouldn't and, sound good to the people. Take, take advantage of the, the space you have. Yeah, piece. right. Exactly. 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 Yeah, we were tra- we were trying to make it a thing. It was like, it was like uh, our friend Gang, who was on the the board of the pavilion and uh, the organ pavilion in San Diego was like, uh, hey, I have this idea. You have, have you have Dragon Jay get back together and and play with the organ. And we, well, there have been lots of offers for us to, to or sing. And we're like, that sounds pretty cool. That'd be cool. Let's yeah, do that's, that. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> so we did that. And then, and then after that, we're like, we can make some money if we just <laughs> right, right, yeah, totally. Because there's clearly <laughs> like, an audience. We just, for it, so right? we just, I mean, we just, we just like, yeah, we could, we could, we could go play and like people, people like this, and we'd have fun and and like, I can, we play like Coachella and stuff like no, <laughs> super funny, but um, we got paid a lot of money. <laughs> right, like, right. It was awesome, and and uh, and it was awesome when we got to play like little things and stuff and and really get back to them. Uh, the spirit of the whole thing, which I don't think people uh, kind of had to be around for it. So it was like it wasn't the same every night. It was it was a different because you could mess with Jerry. Jerry, you could mess with. There's not a lot of cost makes in that argument. It's like it's it's the same song every time. Yeah. Um, so it was it was pretty neat. Well, and that was real special just because that was like a big communal experience too. The organ, like I do think that the other. Two times I saw you at the Independent and at the um, the Ritz. Like the Ritz. you, you probably Ritz? played better at that one, and you what? played longer for sure. Like you, because you had been like kind of being a band again. Longer. The Ritz. Where's right. the, what's the Ritz? Uh, that was San Jose. That was the one. Uh, oh, that was the one Ritz. you talked me into coming to. Remember? 
shit. No, I like that place. I like that place. I forgot the name. I, it's like, uh, I, I know those guys, and they're, uh, they rule. Um, Corey. And then, um, and then somebody, uh, yeah, and somebody kept being, you know, turn the vocals up, turn the vocals up, and John did that. Well, see, what you need to do is you need to stand so the speakers hit this way. You're up here, and like he did this whole thing. It was real funny, and I, I was, I was there with um, a friend okay. who like runs live sound, and he was pretty psyched on the, uh, on that specific stage banter, because they were like people that were like, hey, turn, you know, turn the vocals up, but like they were like, <laughs> the speakers were uh, behind them. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know I don't know if John is like the best guitar player who's ever lived or anything like that I think he's a really good guitar player I, I, I don't know I don't know where he, he fits in the whole pantheon of, of guitar players and, and stuff like that but I know where he fits in the pantheon of guys who talk a lot of shit on stage and that is like at the <laughs> fucking head he he is he is like the absolute best at it I, I, I've, I've seen so many shows so many shows or he was. I, I I can't believe he, he, he the, the things he says and um. For example, like a, uh, oh bits of nightmare for the we're playing in Boston. So um. Oh yeah yeah we did that tour together sure yeah 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 we did a tour together and we flip we we did flip the coins or or we the uh, we 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 swap headlines. So they played last and we played last whatever we just flip flopped. And uh, on this particular night it was, it was they were it was their turn in Boston. And we played in this place that was owned by, I guess, people from like the Dropkick Murphys or something like that. And they had these giant, like, giant, giant, giant TV screens all playing like Boston sports. It was in the winter, so it was like mm, hockey and then like just whatever. And it was like really snowy and everyone was kind of bummed. It was like not the best situation. And we played and like, Whatever, and like I was saying to John backstage, like, so do you ever, you know, any time do you ever like, you know, go off in Boston? He's like, no, never. I was like, really? Because like, you know, I've seen, I've seen this stuff a lot of times, and you usually go off and whoever it is. Like, no. Last time I was up here, I played in the, played in uh, the Sultan, and I was free singing, and I would hold the mic and I'd, I'd kind of stick my pinky out, and like, uh, it was just my style, you know, I'd kind of hold. Hold, hold the mic with three fingers in my thumb and like stick my pinky out. I'm just free singing. And after the show, this guy comes to music. He's like, hey, what, you know, what was the, I can't do the Boston accent, but it's like, he's like, so, you know, uh, pff, you guys are pretty good, but what's up with this all, this pinky thing? And John, like, was, like looking up at this guy, like two heads tall, and I was like, that's because I'm gay. <laughs> like, like, all the gay people. <laughs> <laughs> for Jimmy, <laughs> he's a super Southie guy. Just like grab him, like whoa, <laughs> just drags him up. <laughs> Jesus, like, um, and then uh, any, anyway, that's that's the, that's the story. And anyway, so I was like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. And then uh, and then we play, and like they play, and he just proceeds to go off on Boston so hard. <laughs> and I wish I could remember the stuff he said because I mean, you have to get him on your on your thing because he's because he's just like he's like. One of the funniest Rick, you know what's funny is is the the tour you guys this tour you guys did together at the SF show. I talked to him about it and he agreed to be he's like, Yeah, let's do it. Like he agreed to it then. Like how long ago was that? Right? But then like I don't know. Just you know, whatever. We trade emails I'll, I'll, now I'll, and again. I'll, 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 and... I don't know, I'll tell him I'll tell him I did it and I don't that that, that yeah. like... And they can feel better about it. But I just think it's funny because like that that show was probably like a week after, or week or two after you this happened, right? <laughs> but mm. <laughs> that was a great tour though because that was you know, obits. Or... Yeah, it was fun. It was totally. Cool. It was a cool show. I, I like the Nightmare a lot actually, and um, and it's it's great to have John and Gar playing guitar together. It's really cool. Yeah, and I thought it was a good. They're both really good guitar players. Man. And even without the, uh, the the sort of the family the family tree or anything, like I thought the bands complimented each other. Like I've had Sorab on a few times too. Um, oh, I, I don't really. Yeah, oh, shit. I, I don't listen to that. Uh, and uh, and I just thought it was a good like it was even like without the Hot Snakes thing, it was like oh, this is a good double bill of like good rock and roll bands. You know. I, I thought that was yeah, like, we figured we figured we figured it'd be fine, and it was like we all knew each other, and we all liked each other, and it was a. Uh, it's a good time. It's really fun. So, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, like post Jehu, <laughs> right? You um, well, well, that's 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 like 
Post Doo for me is like three or four years of not being in a band, and then I moved to New York, and then I got an Oscar. Right. You, uh, I think you, 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 I think you did something on that one last one. You had a seven inch, right? Or no, it's the first record. I'm trying to remember. I'm not on that record. I'm not. I'm not in that band. I what? The, you are the, the guest. Only, I, I, I played a tour from from this band last one. Is the guitar player uh, Brian is uh, right. a guitar player from Red Fang. Right, right, right. And he, he actually um, he told this story on on the air. Um, okay. But it was like a so million I, years. I ago. just I, I just toured. Right. I just toured my way. I, I played. I played in like. Uh, I don't know, three or four songs of theirs. And I just, I just, this is my way of getting my amplifier <laughs> to uh, to New York, because I, I could, I could send everything else that I that I cared about, but like my amplifier had to be uh, trucked out there somehow. And I just, I just like went with that. And um, I love that band too. They're and they're, they're really so good. Cool I, I, I yeah, they're absolutely great. adored. Really cool people. Years. Yeah, they're great. Then you end up in New really York, and you, and you do design stuff in New York for for some some amount of years, right? I mean, I've been here for twenty three years. Yeah, well, well yeah, Jesus, so, time flies, huh? It's a long time. Yes, it does. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> right now, <laughs> God, <laughs> horrible. And, and uh, so then you aren't really playing. And then uh, you, what? So John, like years later, like John, like hits you up. Hey, I got this. I got this thing. Like. Yep, that's exactly what happened. I was I was hanging out when they played a rocket show here. And John said, "You gotta hear, hear this hot snakes thing." Or not hot snakes. I don't I don't, I don't think it was a name. I had a name, but he uh, he played it for me, and it was like it's the first record essentially. Right. Um, and a bunch of stuff. There was like there's way more songs, but like uh, those the ones that didn't play the record. Or whatever. Anyway, so he, he uh, played it for me. I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! You want to sing?" I was like, "Sure." So what was that? So that's how Hot Snakes kind of started. Um, got Gar to play bass when we played live, and it's basically that that first record is just John and Jason. And yeah. they, it's just them playing. And then you and, have, I mean, <clears throat> and there, there wasn't yeah. really uh, any mindset towards like, oh, hey, we're gonna do this live and stuff uh, immediately because I I, I, <laughs> I, I heard we all liked it. We all liked it. We all thought it was cool. Right. We all, we all it was cool. But I think of that that first song on that first record, which is killer. It's like one of my favorite intro tracks of like you know any records. It's, it's freaking awesome. But there's like no breath for you to take <laughs> during any of it, like vocal wise. Like it's kind of like dude, I'm like on. a surfer now. I'm not, I, I'm, I, I, I like I know how to hold my breath, right? It's right. Like, it's like because like when we when, we, when, I, when we first started doing that band, I had to go out and like, yeah, yeah. Go, that's that's the, the first time like, like, you, you totally like you win for, and I could tell you're like, oh fuck, I'm getting winded. <laughs> yeah, dude. And after after the show, I want I want to puke. Yeah. And like, and, and it was just like, it wasn't fun. And I, I just learned how to relax. It's like, it's like, like if you see Hoffnick now, it's like, you'll see Johnny like jump around, yeah, and doing Elvis moves and shit like that. And I'll, I'll just stand there. Because like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, because, um, because it's like, I, I'm trying to conserve energy yeah. to get that crappy sound out of my, out of my body. So you have to like, really not a rest so you, you go you use the energy and then you rest you know what i'm saying so yeah, that's yeah. so that way it's that way you just instead because like before i used to just you, just you would just be totally tense like you see hardcore bands like it's like I'm just gonna scream and you're like, 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 yeah and then like they oh, I'm just, uh, i have to work out in order to do this no you don't <laughs> you, you just, you, it's all you just you just need to fucking take a breather when you're not like when you're not screaming you know it's like it's like it's, like, it's not it's it's just uh, what, I don't I'm not, why am I talking about this? No, no, because it's in, it's interesting because it is. It, it, it's uh, it's punk rock music for like adults is how I would kind of characterize it, right? But you, you, well, there's no such thing as punk rock music for adults. <laughs> I mean, we're we're living this Peter Pan existence in some ways, like where we're like, yeah, I, I love Stalag Thirteen. I, you know, it's like it's like. <laughs> It's like it's like it's like, dude, you're fucking fifty. You like Stalag thirteen? You know, you know what I'm saying? Really? No, I just got this RKL record on. It's like it's like it's 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 uh it's just it's just funny. It's but it's but it but that's the deal. I mean, and I I'm guilty of this too because I I still I'm still frozen in 
in time in some ways. I just I just love rock and roll music and all that stuff, and I just think it's the greatest thing. And, I, and, it, and it's and it is really silly. And I, like I feel really silly as an as a you know pretty old guy at this point. Like I'm still interested in this. It's like so it's so weird to me. Well, sure, and, and 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 to be clear, I was trying to pay a compliment as far as that goes because I it, it is something where it's. You didn't say they offended me or that. I don't worry about it. I, I mean, I've talked to other folks about like how you know the punk rock, as a, you know, as a culture, as a music form or whatever. You know, there's no precedent for like what happens when like you get older. Okay, well, do you like do you, like you know the Nick Cave thing? Okay, well that's one path, right? You know, and then you have like. <laughs> You know, are you well, that still... guy's an outlier. He's a, he's he's a really he's an outlier. I think yes. he's a multi talented guy. He, he do like I, I'm not. I got to be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of his uh, Nick Cave records output. I, um, I I'm I'm be honest but, with you. I'm I feel the same way. Like there's a few but, records I, I love. I did but... see him once yeah. live, and it was like actually like 20 years ago when I first moved here, and it was fucking amazing. Yeah, he, he he's like, like one of the all time. He great he he, for he sure. like yeah. Oh my god, he just he, all the songs that. On record, just sound like yeah, it just sounds like in the studio, dude. Whatever, but like when you see it live, it's like wow. it rips. Yeah, it's it's he he just he's an incredible performer. He's really amazing, really amazing. And also he's like, I saw that movie he did. And it was like pretty good. I was like, is he, is he guy? The the the, That's a lot of the stuff. ten thousand light years on Earth or whatever it's called. Uh, uh I the one I saw was a Western one. It was like a, oh the proposition. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah was, that was good. Was, I like that. That was it was good. It was I mean it wasn't like the best movie I saw in my life or anything, but it was like. That was a good. That was a real western, man. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it was. It was. I didn't feel ripped off after I watched it, or that it, it was some like you know certificate of participation movie. It was. A, it was a solid movie. The yeah. guy. The guy. The guy did a good job. I mean, he wrote it. I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's lots involved with movies. But so, so this is. Did you ever hear? Uh, this is the first time I've, I think I would have talked about this, but like he wrote a sequel to Gladiator. Did you hear about this? Oh, wow. That would be amazing. It's crazy. I'd love it. I, I would totally watch that. That would be Nick Cave's Gladiator. Oof. And, and Gladiator. it's like time travel. Gladiator 2 by Nick Cave. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's, be this next record. It's totally Gladiator 2. Wild. <laughs> it's totally crazy. Like I've never, I've never read the screenplay, but he wrote like a whole screenplay for it. And like Jesus features into it. And like, yeah, there's time travel. It's fucking nuts, apparently. It's like totally crazy. But Dude, it sounds, sounds totally worth checking out. What about the new Danzig movie? Have you, have you, have you seen the previous to that? It's like a vampire movie? He's in it. Uh, wh- which one? The. Uh, he's got a he's got a movie. He's got a, like a feature movie. It's like a vampire. It looks a lot like. No the, kidding. It looks a lot like that uh, like sort of Robert Rodriguez. Uh, oh, like from Dust Till Dawn, kind of. Yeah, okay. looks a lot. It's, it seems like, but Danzig is one of the vampires, which is. Thank huh. God. I All right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can dig that. And uh, I think Robert Trujillo is in it, like uh, sort of really the world's scariest Mexican actor. You know, like the yeah, guy. That guy's he's, rad. Like, he's in everything. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, is that, no, that Robert Trujillo is the best bass player for Metallica. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're thinking of Danny Trejo. Sorry. You're thinking of Danny Trejo. <laughs> the second scariest Mexican. Yeah, that's the guy from Suicidal <laughs> Tendencies. You're right. Yeah, yeah, totally. My bad, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm all like, yeah, 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 he's great. <laughs> Dude, that guy's amazing. I mean, like, you watch, you watch that guy play, and you have that like, whole, the whole crawl thing. That guy's, that guy's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You ever hear the the the, the Lou Reed? Um, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Lulu. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, there's, well, there's some live stuff. And they're trying to put like sweet chain and stuff. Metallica's trying to get sweet chain. <laughs> And Lars can't swing anything. No, no, so he's like the like, least swingy like, drummer ever. Yeah. He's like the least swingy drummer who's ever lived. Yeah, he's just like flogging it along. I think Lee Reed is just like, wow, this this really sounds because he's like, oh, this really sounds different. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's super funny to me. I'm sorry. Well, and that record's Sweet hilarious James. too. Dude, I mean, man, I wish I I only wish if if James Hetfield sang it would be that much better though. Sweet Jane, yeah. <laughs> that would be. Oh, sorry. Well, and then like the and the originals that they did in that record, there's like I am the table, like you know, there's like some like mm. whoa, what is somebody like nobody was around to say no for any of this? 
Okay. Uh, dude, I love Metallica. I love it. They're uh, yeah. they fall they follow their own North Star, man. Like good 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 for them. <laughs> good for them. They did. I mean, like that band is a huge band. And like and like and like when they never got played on the radio or anything like that. I mean, like they just they succeeded through pure merit and elbow yeah. grease. They like they really they really they had something people wanted. I mean, like fast, hard, nasty American pimply metal. I mean, they they do it great. I mean, I think they. I mean, I'm not. It's not something I put on and like, like a home or anything like that. But like, at one point in my life, they were my favorite band. You know, I, I loved them. When the Ride the Lightning came out, I bought it. But I was there fucking at like nine o'clock in the morning when Licorice Pizza opened up to buy that record. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it still slams too. You know, and it's one of those things where you know, good for them for figuring it out and making a career of it. You know, that's, and, and here's, here's, so here's my take on it. Like, okay, yeah. Oh, the new Metallica record, you know, it's, it's, it's here. It's here. Cool. I kind of, I kind of felt like, I kind of oh, felt I like they were like is Sonic. There, is, there, is there a new Metallica record? No, I was just, cause I kind of felt like how Sonic Youth was for a while for me where I'm like, yeah, I have enough Sonic Youth in my life. Good on you guys. You know, but like, it's, that's fine. I don't need to check this one out. You know, it's okay. Do you think Sonic Youth? Sonic Youth are like my, one of my favorite. They're one of my favorite bands, but like they have some records where I'm like, ah, okay, what's this? Okay. Like, right. well, actually, most of them. <laughs> but like, but like, it doesn't matter because like the ones that they did are so good. Yeah, are like so like so transcendently good that it's like they could just keep cranking out crap forever, and like it, it's like it's like doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. I mean, the, the, like. When I, I saw Sonic Youth on the Evil tour, and it was like, oh fuck yeah, that's one of my favorite records. That's so good. And like, I, I think it was like maybe my last day of school. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to see Sonic Youth. And, I, and the weird kind of choice because Black Flag were also playing much closer to my house. <laughs> oh my god! But it was Black Flag. The Black Flag of that period was like kind of like, yeah. Oh, so that was like a uh, um, loose nut kind of era, or. Even later than that, oh. it was like it was the only two people. The only two people left were like, like, like even the only Kira was the, only, the only the only the only the <laughs> only original member left was was Greg Gear. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean Henry was in it, obviously, but like it was like eh, because Sonic Youth was like the most exciting. Yeah. So thing. so so like, so Sonic Youth is at like the peak him. of their power, and then like Black Flag is like uh, who's got the not, ten the, not the peak, so. not the peak, but like rising. Like, right. Like, right. Right. That record is not their best record. It's like, but it's it's like, it's like when you saw that, saw that live. It was, man, it was, good. it was so. Good. And they, I saw them at this place, North Park Lions Club, which is a really small place, and um, and they actually hated their set. They were like, they they, they didn't even do an encore. They were just, yeah, they thought, they thought they were terrible, and they were, they were just to me, they were just like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. They put with Sacker and Trust too, which was cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and that, that, that band I'm super into, except for Sacred Trust playing next year. Yeah, that that point was kind of whatever. Because that record's surviving always. That Sacred Trust record is, is like is like one of my favorite SST records ever. It's like <laughs> I just remembered. I was I was such a huge Black Flag fan. I uh, I ordered a Gone record, record at one point. Oh, I, I was oh my god! I was so like, bummed out. <laughs> It's torture. It's terrible. I was like, I was like, this can't. Did I get the wrong record? This can't be it. <laughs> you know, people. You know, people. People shit on that guy, Greg Gaiman, and, and like, I want to like be the first to say, fuck the people who shit on that guy. That, that guy, guy's, a, that guy's that guy. a guitar genius. Like, <laughs> well, he, he just he just isn't content to like just do the same thing over and over again. Yeah, he wants to him. do something different. Yeah, yeah, good for him. It's it's his life. It's his exploration, his journey, and it's cool and whatever. But I mean, like. Most of it, I think, isn't something I want to listen to. But <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. But but it's uh, but but I, boy, the, the guitar playing on Black Flag, you like on my favorite record, I think, is Slip It In. Slip It In's all, underrated, I feel. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. The, the first the first two songs, they could Slip It In and um, what was it, Black Coffee. I'm not, I'm not sure what the songs are, but like I. Uh, this guitar solo is like, like the, that's the one's got it says that uh, black coffee's in there uh, uh is it uh is it black coffee maybe it is black coffee black coffee stare, stare at the walls, walls. yeah yeah <laughs> totally. um, <laughs> uh, shit, let me look at the five let me look at it so, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember 
this could be a very compelling listen for folks. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Battalion of Saints. I write that kid. I'm going to talk about them. Battalion of Saints. Wow, yeah, I haven't heard of that in a while. You're putting me through my paces with the old punk rock stuff. It's awesome. You know, I have a, I have a kind of a lousy record collection this year. I, I sold a lot of that for burritos and I. <laughs> yeah, okay. Flip it in there. Okay, is flip it in. Black coffee. Yeah, those are the two. Those are the two songs I like. Wound, wound up and rat's eyes. Right? Wound that's, up and rat's eyes are really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The second song, second side, I don't think that you're not evil is a stupid song. Uh, it starts off with that instrumental. Good. That's where they started off with that mm. instrumental stuff. The bars is a good song. Yeah. Obliteration. Yeah. That's. I'm trying to remember obliteration. I think it's pretty good though. Um, yeah, that's that's a great great cover. Talk about iconic. Wow. And that's a great cover. The only Black Flag records I'm looking at, what I own right now, and I only have, I have, I have like a couple singles. I have, I have My War. I have my favorite one, which is fucking everything on black. Oh yeah, that that one that one kills. <laughs> that one's great. And I have like my favorite Black Flag song is on. I have I was cracks in the sidewalk. Uh, compilation has a minute in on it and has some other bullshit that I remember said like like super like spot messing around kind of thing. <laughs> but it's uh, but the, 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 the black black song is uh, clocked in with Des singing, who I think is, is I think maybe my favorite black black. Song. I, I I agree, but what's funny to it's, me is for that, pure like, sound. It's like wow. If so, you if you like see like the target video or whatever of, of like a. Uh, of like with with Des singing, it's like you can totally tell like he's singing wrong. He's like blowing out his voice the whole freaking time, right? And it no, sounds I don't, so I don't think I don't think like live he'd be the best singer. I, yeah, I, I don't I don't but think the that, records. Think, he's yeah, got yeah, the best yeah, front man of the band. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Henry. That's Henry. But like, but For like, sure. um, but he does have the a rad voice, and he does. He's a better. I think he's a better singer than Henry is. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, but but Henry's yeah, but like the worst singer to me is Chavo. I think he's I think he's I think he's the worst singer, the worst singer, or not, or I think he's number four. Keith Morris is really amazing. Keith Morris is amazing, but he, like they were almost a different band then, you know, like in a good way. Yeah. Like I love that shit. Yeah, no, I love that stuff. Like that song, I've had it. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to. I'm going to. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> but it is it is kind of when you when you when you listen to it, it is kind of like kind of snotty british british it's like it's like it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of john R. johnny rotten you know the way he sings i'm going to explode it's like it's not like a it's not it's 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 it's, it's, it's british sounding the way he sings super fun it's like snotty you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like Hermosa uh, Beach, British. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's totally English. It's like that's that, that's a uh, very strange, but he's great. He 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 came on the show. He um, it's hard to get a word in edgewise with that guy, but he's great. I love him. <laughs> like he's 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 fantastic. He's he's I I he's like he's like the Gandalf of uh, punk rock or something like that. Yeah, man. He's he's a he's a pretty pretty amazing guy. Um. Well, I so I was going with all that like a million years ago. I was just going to say is that like I kind of felt like with Hot Snakes, it was it, like the way I described it to my friend was was like, oh, yeah, it's like the Jehu guys, but they're doing like a band that's kind of like in the same lines of like wipers and crime. And he's like, oh, fuck, yeah, let's go and see him. Great. You know, this is early on I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And, you know, I meant and again, painting the picture, because I think like a lot of people think about Hot Snakes after like the, the second round of Hot Snakes. Right. And. That was kind of a weird time for aggressive music. Like everything was like new metal. You know what I mean? Like Little uh, Biscuit and all that shit. You mean like when we, we like did like we came back? I was talking about when you first came to, like came together. So like first first go around, like it was sort of like like there wasn't a lot of aggressive feel, guitar music. Yeah, yeah, thing. exactly. That, there wasn't a lot mm. of music like that at that time. And now it was, it's so, there. You just you just it was there. It was totally there because we played lots of shows and we generally played aggressive guitar music bands they were they were they were out there they were, they were they were totally out there they were you know what you're right and and that's a that's a poor statement on, on my part but I, it's sort of like they were there but it wasn't like in the zeitgeist i guess i should say and like it was something where like that that first record like it rips so hard and it's just so relentless too and that's kind of one of the things i like about it 
I mean, it's not. It's way know. more. It's way more punky than, yeah. than like Drive Drive Today is way more arty or even metally or jammy even. I don't know. Than than uh, Hot Snakes. Hot Snakes is really direct. Hot Snakes is pretty immediate, and like the songs aren't like you know nine twelve minutes long. As much I love those nine twelve minute long songs. <laughs> You know, it's you can fit a lot more of them in when if, it's. You know what? If you can pull off, if you can pull one off, it's you know, Hawkwind can pull one off, or Thirteenth Oil Elevator can pull one off. But like, but like a bunch of kids who don't really know how to play that good. It's it. We kind of lucked out because like I think I think that like that song like like Lou or something like that. Yeah, that, that's that's still pretty cool. But it's like, but it's it's like pretty hard to get away with that kind of. Length of just to me, I just don't want to hear that. I want to hear. I want to hear a, a good song. But I mean, even like you know, I mean, Bullet Train to Vegas. That song rips. You know, like that, and that's. Well, a, it's a, it's a, that's that's like that's like the most hardcorey hardcore song we have in the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It wasn't like, but I'm just saying, you weren't all doing like ponderous hawk when. <laughs> Jams or anything like along those lines, and also no, we, well, we never did. We never did. We 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 weren't. But we we didn't have the same. Sorry about the wind. Um, we, we did. We yeah, we didn't have the same mentality. Talk. I mean, like Hawkwind. I don't. I don't think I even. I definitely didn't know who Hawkwind was when the Driver Day was active. So we couldn't have been biting them. But like, it was just. I don't know. We we felt like we we're like. Kind of just seeing what we could do. I don't know. Just, we, we weren't. We, we, did, we didn't have a plan. Well, I think that's something that, that made the sound kind of unique too, because you can't. We're coming out with punk rock intensity, but you're, you know, kind of dicking around with stuff here and there, and like there, there are elements that are almost proggy, but I don't mean that as an insult, if that makes sense. Oh, for sure. Well, <laughs> you, like, know, just, you know what just, I mean. Just, 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 just the length of the song alone is like, yeah. <clears throat> is like. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, like I said, it's asking a lot. It's like, uh, you know, I, uh, songs over three minutes, you're just starting to ask more and more. Of, it's it's, it's, it's got to like be, it's got to hold your attention <laughs> if you're going right. to play a song for, for so, 10 minutes long. So was the first one like along those lines, uh, If It Kills You, off the first record? Was it where it kind of, because that's a kind of a longer one. Well, that first record is so... What the hell we're we doing? We don't even know. Here's some crap we came up with, and we're not playing a record. <laughs> That's. I think by the second record we had a slightly better idea. It's too bad the band didn't like stick around longer because it probably, it probably would have been probably would have done something completely different later. I don't. I don't know. It, it's. Uh, it's hard to say. It's a volatile group of people. Um. I don't know. I, I, I didn't answer your question. What do you, what do you mean, ask me? Well, yeah, because I mean, because it, it does kind of feel like a band cut down in its prime almost to a certain from from an outside perspective, right? It's like, wow, what? God damn! Like that record smokes, but like, what would have happened after that? Oh, I don't know. Um, I yeah, mean, just it's it's just personality things in the in the band, and and um, it's just like uh, that's just kind of. What happens a lot in this band break up they just they don't see eye to eye or whatever or they politics form in the band and it's it's bands are weird it's like a marriage but like four people are born. <laughs> right that's so true man it's so true it's really strange it's a really strange uh strange thing uh, a comment uh from the chat box in 1996 review of the first jehu record at kspc great station it's said, 19, 19, 19, 19, 1986 is, is way too early. It would have to be 96, 96. 96, okay. Uh, the review says, I'm tired of bands that only sing about how mean and ugly they are, is the review apparently. So that's <laughs> wow, you know, that's interesting. Because Jehu got like one bad review. That's the second bad review I've ever heard of, of, Jehu, <laughs> of any Jehu thing. Jehu was like, was like critical favorite. Everyone liked this. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, was no, there was no bad reviews. And like a, that's a pretty. I can, dude, that's legit, man. I, you, listen to shit. Like it's like, fuck this. I'm not with this. 
I, I totally get it. <laughs> I don't think I they're totally even saying they want to listen to it. I think they're just saying they're. No, it's like, no, it's, like, it's, like, it's like it's like it's just not for everyone. It's <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah, really exactly. it's really it really targets a, a people with a certain a certain time and a certain mentality. It's like it's not. It just doesn't. I'm glad it. I'm glad it still resonates to people. Sort of maybe now. I don't. I have no idea. But it, it, uh, pro tip, it does. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Great. That's great. That's great. That's totally great, uh, it, but it's like it's not. It's not. You know, the customer isn't always right. It's like it's like. Right. Yeah. It's like this is this is this is just us spewing out our angst and ideas and blah blah blah. And that's that's all it is. And like, if if people like it, rad. If people don't, I totally understand why you don't <laughs> like it. Right. Well, talk about my suicide. dad doesn't like it either. It's like you know, I get it. You know, that's what I understand. But he did get to see you play a big packed ass show in the middle of uh, San Diego Park, which is pretty rad. <laughs> that's uh, right. Well, not that that's that, what so that, that sort of made me look a little better. Like, oh yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not completely wasting my life. I mean, it's like, it's like, there you go. There's four thousand people for you, Dad. Are they here to see me? <laughs> 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 no, it's a, you know, you get, it's hard to get those dads. They're hard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my, uh, it's just to give a a little context, (laughs) my my dad's reaction after seeing uh, my first band and I guess second most, uh, second most long lived band, whatever. As I was like, I was like, ah, how'd you like it? Knowing full well, he's like a rocker. Like he saw Alice Cooper band in their heyday, Deep Purple, like saw the Ramones at Winterland, right, right. And then, yeah, a cool rock and roll dad, long story, but like his, his review of it, yeah, that was loud. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard that one before. <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, oh, come on!" <laughs> first time we went to DC. First time we went to in DC. Like we 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 uh, put the nine thirty club, the old one, which is uh, oh sure, yeah, yeah. I got shit hole. And we played there, and like uh, yeah, we got to meet some of our DC heroes. Like Ian was there, and blah blah blah. And like uh, I think it was like Chris Bald was backstage, or like the guy from the face, you know. Etc. And he, he's this towering guy, and he's like, he's like, that was really loud. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Oh, come on. It was like, <laughs> That's what he said. So that was my first uh, contact with my DC heroes. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, you're not wrong, but uh, I mean, that no, guy... that's an ins- that's an insult. That's not that's that wasn't a compliment. That was an insult, and that, and that's like. Yeah, whatever. There, there's a. You want to play with us, motherfucker? <laughs> it's like, let's see who comes out on top. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because there's like a like Jelly Biafra wants to kind of be like, you know, Conan, I really like Replicator, but do you have to play so loud? And I was like, Jello, fucking dead Kennedys, oh, man. Are you fucking oh, yeah. kidding me right now? Really? <laughs> no. You know what? They- I don't think that I think the Dead Kennedys are were, were sophisticated musicians, and they did not play that loud. And and yeah. um, and uh, and it was really important for the lyrics to be heard. And yeah. he's not he's not like a power belter singer. He's like he's a you know that weird thing. Yeah, has. vibrato. And like, and like the thing about Dead Ken- the, 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 one of the great things about Dead Kennedys is you don't really you need, you need a lyric sheet to understand what the song's about, and they're all about something. It's true. It is true. So and, um, I get where he's coming that from. That guy's a great singer, man. He's a he is. Great I, I, I actually, I, I think he's underrated in the uh, Pantheon. And he gets a lot of grief uh-huh. because of who he is now outspoken he is. I don't know if he's underrated. He gets grief? Why does he get grief? Well, I, you're asking the wrong guy, but I mean, he got like, you know, beat down at Gilman that one time for not be, for being a sellout or something like years ago. I mean, like. Oh, you, oh my God. That yeah. place is retarded. I mean, that was ridiculous. I, I mean, let's not forget. Like, I, oh I, I live in Wisconsin now, but I'm a Bay Area dude. <laughs> Yeah, so it's... Oh, you live in Wisconsin. Where you live in Wisconsin? Milwaukee. That's why I saw you last. Oh. I saw it at... Uh, um, oh, shit. Uh, Sorry, where the fuck sorry. did you play? Uh, not... Um... That weird place. I don't know. That weird... <sighs> I'm, I'm blanking on the name. But you, you know the one I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine. The, pla- yeah. the place that wasn't Cactus Club, because the original was going to be a Cactus Club. <laughs> I, re- I remember the place. It was... It was uh... Mad Planet. Mad Planet. Okay. Yeah, Mad Planet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is great. That was a great show. And um, cool. Yeah. I, I don't remember. 
<laughs> but I do remember. I, I do remember the events. The weird thing about uh, for me is like I never remember the actual show, ever. I don't think I've ever, I can remember. I can remember that. I can remember the the, uh, the what the organ pavilion one. I can remember that. But most shows are just like there's like a blend of just like a, ooh. But the stuff that goes on around them. That you remember. That I remember. I remember all. What do you remember about Suicide Invoice making that record? That's a good one. Uh, almost nothing. I don't. <laughs> well, that, well, that was the, the. I mean, that was you already. It wasn't like almost the record nothing. had been made ahead of time, right? Like you. It was a little. No, but there, there are there are some songs that are left over from the, from the first uh, round that Jason and John did. So like like that song Suicide Invoice is left over from that. It just didn't. Like there's there's there was just a bunch of songs. So that 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 like that song specifically was left away from from uh, the first time. Um, I don't remember that one. I remember more uh, Autumn in Progress because it was more. That was super bandy. That was with that Mario, was like, uh, who also was on the show. Oh, cool. Yeah, we bullshitted about records for like the last half hour, uh, probably more like the last hour of the show, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, talking talk about records, talking about records. Yeah, yeah. Just well, I mean, we're both record nerds. That's so. Mario. Yeah. yeah. That guy's exactly. like, that guy's like, Guess what's going like, to happen? He's that great. guy's like an authority on that stuff. He's like, he's like, he's like, if I wanted to sing in band, and I couldn't figure it out. I just ask him, and he just went down. And he's just like, he just knows everything. It's crazy. And that um, was a, that was a changer for the band too, because I mean, he's got different style. Well, I, I right? like I said, I remember that. I just, I just for some reason I did. I don't know why. Um, you, what I remember about Suicide Invoice is I remember the tour that we had, um, and it was like the best tour we had, like, I've ever been on. It was like it was like a, that particular tour. Um, Jason and we could be having the Barracudas and this guy Jonathan Karnick just down man. It's just like. Just like beautiful, everything, everything was everything was great, and, and um, we did well. People liked this. That was that was a, that was a, that was a really good tour. Um, that's that's what I remember about that record. The, the 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 second record I remember recording it. I remember going out and the tour being a little less attended. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, I think, that's interesting. Yeah, people, okay. Yeah, it was like it was like we played a lot of shows when we were there. Um, so yeah, people are fickle. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> was everybody into? I'm trying to think of what everyone was into at that time. That was uh, uh mm. like was that when like all the dance like the gravy train? Oh, oh no, that's when the Gang of Four ripoffs kind of started to come out, right? That was around that. Yeah. Time. Well, no, that was even before that. That was actually that's actually like. First, like that's actually like that's pretty early two thousands, pretty early aughts. So it's yeah. like, because so, like, I live in New York and I, I, you know, all of them are here. Yeah, it's yeah. like a really, really super. Uh, play with them, like you know, like um, sometimes like Luke from the Rapture. They were super young for me. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I like their that that first um that out of the races on the track EP. I thought that one was really good. Yeah, they were just they were just a three piece band. We yeah. played with them a bunch of times, like during the during the first two record thing. Or whatever. Um, there was. Radio 4, we're really getting a 4 um, Well, there's a, there's a bunch of bands. Seconds, the, which... Uh, ended even up, the Yeah Yeah Yeahs are kind of like that. Yeah, like it, was, it, was, it was Seconds, I think, was Brian's first band. Then he ended up Yeah Yeah Yeahs and uh, Liars, yeah, The Liars. That's... The li- yeah, The Liars, yeah, The Liars were... Yeah, I, I, I saw The Liars once, I think. And I was like, wow, oh, that's not going to Um... Yeah, you know, rip off a band. That's a good band, <laughs> and like with Franz Ferdinand ripping off too. And oh yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Wasn't there a lot of people like yeah? They just they were just like the most for one for that the, that little moment in history. They were just the most bitten band, and it was like dang it for. Yeah, and then and then and then Andy Gill like was like, hey, maybe we should re- record some of these songs and cash in on this, and uh, mm. that that uh, uh is return the gift, and it's got um. Which I remember because it's it's mostly like, you know, the good songs off Entertainment, like best songs of Entertainment, and uh, oh, because um, they they weren't getting paid for those because they weren't getting paid like for it. Yeah, yeah, and Solid Gold, yeah. and but they also recorded two songs that kind of rip, that are in that really shitty recording period where everything sounds like artificial and terrible. 
Uh, there's like one-off songs of the. Oh, like, like uh, like uh, oh, like we shit. uh we live as we dream alone, and I I love a man in uniform, which are off. Yeah, I love a man in uniform. That's one I was trying to think about. Like yeah, the, and uh, those those records kind of blow. <laughs> it's a different it, it's a different lineup too, right? Yeah, it's yeah, because it's they're like player, it's more discoy, right? Yeah, exactly, and they have a, a a more like kind of like austere kind of like not band sound so they re-recorded them but they recorded them like you know like a band playing as a band it's actually pretty good like it's like those songs at least are like i bet you would be good i bet you would be good yeah yeah that was that was the problem just from in all periods of music it's like it's like it's all about what the technological thing is happening so like you 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 go to record in the studio and and they're just gonna make you sound like the whatever the technology is you know it's like it's you know what i mean like all all fucking drums in the 80s sound like cannon fire <laughs> right. yes as much as i love the ssc stuff like all those and spot every, records every like, every what? every band every every new wave band has a singer that sounds like shoot that pause and i wrote through my heart they all sound like this and i was like just both of the it's like why like, everybody wants to you know like, <laughs> all the bands from that period sound have that same voice yeah yeah Except yeah totally <laughs> everyone everyone has the same voice and then you get the nineties. It's like it's like it's like everything sounds like. Well, I think it sounds like James Hetfield. It's like the Yarl, you know, the Yarl, the Yarl, yeah, the Yarl, the Yarl. Everything sounds like that. It's like <laughs> it's it's weird. It's it's God. <laughs> did, you, did you ever see uh, this? Is, it was on TV the other night. Ghost World, that movie. Uh, oh yeah, I, I watched. I watched the one that the Terry Terry was wanting out was wide off. Yeah, yeah, it's like the Daniel Klaus, but um, like the book. right, 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 right. Pretty good. Uh, one of Scarlett Johansson's first. Yeah, movies. That's a, and, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. That's, I think it's her. I think it was her, it's her debut. But there's that band, uh, that, like they're, they're at like the blues club. And blues they're, Hammer. They're, blues Hammer. Yes. <laughs> blues Hammer. Oh, if great... you like blues, you'll love Blues Hammer. <laughs> and they're like, we're that one girl to the crossroads. <laughs> You know everybody shits on every every you know everybody shits on that I really love is fucking George Thurgood. George everyone Thurgood. Shits on, everyone shits on George Thurgood, and I fucking love George. Thurgood. You, you know, uh, some great. somebody played me a, you know, one whatever, one whiskey, whatever. One bourbon wants one bourbon wants cash, dude. Yeah. Come on. Somebody played that. You know, you know, you know what that is, though, right? I mean, it's like what is? What it's is? a mashup of two John Lee Hooker songs. Oh, okay. But but somebody played that to me. Brian. Alfred Boogie and, or Blues or, and, and. Oh, okay. Blues that makes sense. That makes sense. Somebody played Nashville. that from and didn't say who it was, and I was like, "Hey, this is pretty good. What is this? Like, it's George Thurgood." I'm like, "No, but really, who is it?" <laughs> no, George Thurgood is really good. He's really he destroys. He's really good. That's right. They they, and also and also by the and also you gotta like give him respect to because like they came around in like like the early or the late seventies, early eighties when when all that stuff was like was all that the cannon fire and all that stuff like that. They have two records that are like a rounder records. Yeah, which is a folk label, and and it's just the most minimal, honest recording of just like them tearing up these like, yeah, you know, whatever. They're playing you know Howlin' Wolf songs. Or they're playing blues it's like blues songs. rock, sure, but I mean yeah. But it's but it's but it's it's pretty bluesy, and they 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 really they really they really do it well. I, and I I don't I think it's it's like a, yeah I don't, I don't think they're like. This are in the same period as like the Red Hot Chili Peppers or something like that. Yeah, I think it's it's, <laughs> like headline on Brooklyn Vegan. Another tomorrow. another band, another band, <laughs> another band. You as a Californian should know this. That 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 like I don't know how old you are, but the Red Hot Chili Peppers at one point were like a cool band. Yeah, cool. no, I, I'm. So... Every, they played with Black Flag and the V Puppets and blah 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 blah. They were a cool band. Yeah, no, nobody nobody talks no one knows about this. it. I I came in right as that changed, like right as that changed, and I was like, oh, this mm. is pretty good. Like again. <laughs> Dumb kid in Modesto, right? Likes Sonic Youth and like Black Flag, and like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, and then like, probably saw the dumb kid. but like, yeah, I mean, it's it's like it was it was just a their demographic changed and people just wanted to distance themselves from that demographic. Basically, yeah. it's like, but the music was always fucking terrible. <laughs> um, it was always terrible. It's never good. good. Yeah, it's not great. No, it's never good. It's never good. <laughs> it's, it, um, but they sounded like they were fun to see live, and they sounded like they had an attitude. Um, yeah. Like, like, it was like, uh, 
Well, and you got to think of the like things that happening at the time too, like Fishbone, who were always an incredible live band. That was happening around the same time too. That's sort of like, am I going to throw on a Fishbone record? I never saw them. I never saw them. Never they, saw they were them. Psh, credit where credit due. That band, freaking slayed. Because you had like, like the Parliament kind of aspect, but coming from like, uh, like a punk rock perspective, you know. And I, I can't, I, I can't listen to a record. I'm sorry. Like it's just, this is not for me. Like it. <laughs> right. But that, that, well, that's that's the problem. But I mean, I, well, it's, no, that's not the problem because you, it's like, oh man, you had to be there. So you know, sometimes, sometimes you like this band, you kind of like, you know, the records aren't really gonna stoke you out that much. But like, but like, if you were if you were standing in front of this band, they would like blow your head. They would. Off. They would. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's my impression of that band. I um, I actually knew the singer a little bit. I think I think no. I can't remember. Uh, Angelo? There, there was a band. There were, there's a band in San Diego called Daddy Long Legs, and there's lots of. I think there's a lot of Daddy Long Legs. And um, and uh, yeah, and and that guy used to come and hang out. So he would, he would play with them all the time. Uh, Daddy Long Legs. Um, so I met that guy, and he was a really cool guy. But I never actually saw Fishbone. I never saw him. There. I mean, like I said, credit where credits due. I'm not gonna throw on a record, but that fucking live show is like, like they could, they could, like you know, hold a master class. I was like, this is a good fucking live show, dude. Yeah, well, they, 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 they could play. Yeah, it wasn't like punk. That's like punkers. You can't play. No, they were, they were like, they were on it, and they had like the punk rock energy, but they had like musicianship. Where it's like, fuck me, they're like, yeah, they were like students or something, or, or their dads were like. Chess players or some shit. Right, they like, like they, that, yeah. they 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 just, just were really sickeningly good musicians, and that was that. Uh, also, in, in in punk rock, it's another thing. Is like if you're too good, it's like wow, that's that's a problem. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> totally, totally. Like and it's like the like the failures part of it. You know, like <laughs> that's like. like Name a tr- punk rocker who likes Eric Clapton. Right. You know. Like you try to rip off like the things you like, and then you fail. By the way, it. I do like Eric Clapton, and I think I think he gets shit on way too much. He's like really. He's like Harvard, man. He's like cream. What, why is everyone like shit on that person all the time? Well, I described Obits mm. uh, to a friend as punk rock Yardbirds, which got him on board immediately. By the way, and I didn't feel that was exactly accurate. That is that is one of the finest compliments I've ever made. Thank yep. you very much. <laughs> I, and you know what? I knew you dig that. I mean, we were we were actually trying to. My, that that record, Roger the Engineer, is like one of my favorite records it's ever. Good. It's fucking. It's 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 just the most. It's it's so it's super punk. Yeah. Honestly, and it's like those guys recorded that record in an afternoon, and it's like they just. It's so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, and it's like so great. The songs are so cool. It's just like one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite records ever. So good. It holds That's up. What too. Holds up. Like actually, the last uh, like right before the pre-COVID times, I threw on uh, like in the in the van. I threw on some Yardbirds. Just didn't tell anybody what I was doing. And they're like, "Hey, what's this? It's good." I was like, "It's Yardbirds, man. Fucking rips." <laughs> they didn't know who the Yardbirds were. Uh, somebody in the in the van did. I'm not gonna call them out, but like. <laughs> poop, but poop. We don't need to narc them out. It's all right. Hey, but can you real quick talk about Auto in Progress? Auto in Progress, because that's like that's a real front-loaded record. Like all the all, like all, all the kind of all the shitty songs da, 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 da. on the second side. No, <laughs> no I was gonna say like tempo-wise, like all the freaking you know mid, mid to fast tempo rockers are like in the front of, of that record, uh, and it's kind of wild. And then you have uh, like what Plenty for All kind of buried at the back. Uh, was there a thought towards sequencing about that? Was that like a? I don't know. You just, well, when you have a bunch of songs, you just you just you just play around with it and like try to sequence them so they they work. Right. Um, and there's the, when hot sex we play in blocks. We don't we don't we don't we don't write like a like um, some man's write a set list and it's like just a bunch of individual songs. We have blocks. Right. So like. Like it's usually, a, like yeah, like three blocks that just are just just these songs go together. So these blocks, it's actually easier to make a set list that way. But like we have blocks that just like go together, and then like uh, there's standalone songs or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not asking your question. You you, you were asking about other Well, no, um, no, yeah, yeah, but like like about the, the fact that like the sequencing, right? Like it's all like these, all these like badass, you know. 
<laughs> fast rockers like up front and so it's kind of sequenced like a live set in that way, like where they're kind of like sitting together. I right? have to go. I have to. I have to look at the, the track listing because I can't remember the uh, the order. Um, I don't know. Um, what's the, what's the first song? So I think you it's know? a uh, audit in progress. That's a it starts with a brain trust. Am I wrong right about that? Hold on. Oh, that's a, that's pretty that's a pretty slamming song. Yeah, it's like brain it's trust like, highlights retrofit. Like it's like but it's, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a slammer block right yeah, there. Yeah, it's a total slammer. Right block. <laughs> Every time you see us, we'll play all those songs in a row. Every yeah, yeah. Time. And, and then I mean, it's like not like creative control is exactly like you know slow jam. <laughs> Afterwards, like <laughs> I like that song. We, we we don't play that much, but I like that song. Yeah. Yeah, text when you're done. I'll, I'll okay, cool. Well, and I guess I just, you know, Mario, different style, right? Like badass in a different way. And uh, um, they're both. They're both so good. Really, really great. I mm -hmm. like the tour. You might have done this multiple times, but I, well, you had uh, both of them come out. And you had. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that was part of the, the, the whole reunion philosophy. Like, yeah. uh, it's a little weird. It's a little hard carry two drummers but like um it was just like you know just that, that that sort of thing so like and it's still like all things kind of plays with both both drummers mostly jason though because jason's jason's like dedicated to it and he, he's got to do it and like also mario's in like a bunch of the band yeah mario's got um earthless and freaking you know he's, he's a busy dude <laughs> mm. he's a busy he, dude. well he was well I, I think i don't know if he's still in the off but, yeah, but off, he, off is a pretty freaking busy band too. Mm. That's a I don't yeah. It's, that's a. Have you seen Earthless before? Ah, uh, yeah, man, Earthless is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually walked in on Earthless without knowing who the hell they were, and it was like, who the who, who are these guys? What's this all about? This is awesome. And that was a great really? feeling, you know. That's crazy. Yeah, and then um, like immediately I was like, oh, of course, this is, of course this is badass. All right, these guys, cool. Yeah, those guys are those are crazy. Um, it's such a weird band. I feel like they're just sort of like <laughs> they're just like unconstrained by songs. They just <laughs> yeah. like they but just do like it fucking works somehow. How well, because they're, they're, they're such because they're such like they're such exciting musicians. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like uh, uh, Isaiah is, is a crazy, crazy guitar player. Like I, and I'll say it's like good taste. Yeah, but it's like it's just it's just it's just, it's, it's bananas. Sometimes you know, like when I see Earthless, I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette for a while, come back. <laughs> sure. And like, I mean, because because like because like it's just like it's just like it's kind of it's kind of it's almost like new age music. You kind of been drift in and out of it, and like and like come back to it or whatever. It's 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 really but like there's some moments of like just transcendent yeah man they do some it's pretty special like they're a pretty interesting band like it's yeah they're cool they're really cool they're really cool and mike the bass player is like really to his credit like like mike kennedy and drummer too just like holds it down yeah just keeps it keeps it keeps the glue there it's like really really good it's like it's like the heartbeat and <laughs> everything else happening around it yeah just like just, it's just the foundation it's the ground it's like it's like because and they'll all, they'll all go back into whatever um, motif or whatever riff or whatever the fuck it is. But like, uh, they just they just get so out there. It's, it's great. It's really good. We should play like that. I think um, I, I'd love to hear. I think Obits was a very underrated band. Like again, punk rock Yardbirds, right? Like, you know what? I do too. I, 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 but the problem with Obits is like is like look at us i mean it's like it's like it's, it's like there's i mean oh, come on, know, Rick. no it's like it's like a, it's like a bunch of old guys and it's like and that's the problem that's the problem with that already that's a problem but like we're kind of we're kind of we're kind of local heroes right here but people like us around here um and we could we could do it okay i mean but yeah it was it wasn't uh but i, I thought the band was really good i like the band i still do i mean i think like there was a, a through line um, to a lot of you did like kind of like what I like about CCR, you know, just like good, well written songs that like you know, there's some kind of weirdness to them, but it isn't you know, that's it, chugles a little CCR sometimes. Is super, a CCR you know? is a super inspiration for sure. Uh, 
like, yeah. like, but like there's so many other, other <laughs> and like the band the band the band could do the band was a really fun band because you could do anything you could like things like you play with someone you see what they did and you're like okay we're gonna do the opposite of that yeah and you could do the opposite of that and also you could, you could play your songs differently or it is it's really really flexible so it's a Cool do you feel like you got to do everything in that band that you wanted to do? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I to do whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> like, did you feel like you, like, left anything on the table with that band creatively, you think? Oh, I don't know. Well, at some point, somebody broke the seal on this a long time ago where, where like, you break up and then you could, like, get back, get back together again. So... So I could totally, we, we, we totally, wait. we actually have a record coming out that's a live record. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that was uh, recorded in Brisbane, Australia. Um, and I like, I was like, I was, you know, my, I was tasked to do the cover. So I was like, I was like, oh, I want to do the cover, blah, blah, blah. Here's the, here's the, here's the spotify or well not spotify but the soundcloud link to the to the record <laughs> right, i never right. listen. i Whatever never listen. yeah i was like i don't i do not want to hear this i do not want to hear myself bombing in brisbane and i, I finally got the record with or the test pressing was like okay so i had a few beers and like okay i'm gonna listen to this i put it on i was like shit man it's pretty <laughs> kind of, well, I mean, you guys were a ripping band. Like, I, like no, I, I, was like, I was like, I was like, because I didn't at the time. I did. I mean, like, this wasn't a setup recording because, like, it didn't. I didn't know that we were being recorded. Yeah, it was just like whatever which the is, set was. Which playing. is, yeah, yeah, we just played. I was like, I was like, oh, shit, this is pretty good. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this is a pretty good record, actually, and I, actually, I like it better, a lot of it better than like the actual studio versions of the songs. It just came out really good. That's good. so. That's something that's coming out. Then. Yeah, it's coming out like a, I don't know, a month or something like that. Nice, nice. It, 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 it's a trip because uh, in Savak, so Rob plays with a friend of mine, Michael Jaworski, that I know from Tour. Oh, Jaws! Oh, yeah, Jaws. Yeah, Jaws is great. Mm-hmm. Like, but I know him yeah. from the West Coast. I know him from like Seattle. We played uh, with his old band, Virgin Islands. Oh shit. Yeah, small world, right? Because I was like, oh, this yeah, is like it is. world's it is, small, it is a really small world, yeah. <laughs> I, so just, if you if you don't mind, and, and this has been rad, man. This, this is super rad. Can you just talk a little bit about Jericho Sirens? I think that record rips. I think it's, um, it was a nice surprise. Well, you, well, you want to ask a specific question? I, can go I, I, I do want to ask specific really questions prepared. about it. So, okay. for me, it, it almost feels like a couple of songs like almost could have been like Jehu songs or something, right? Was that ever like something like, that was on the uh, table? No, I mean, you, I don't know. You just come up with, you just come up with what you come up with, and it, like if it sounds like that, okay, cool. But you know, if it's uh, I, we just we just started playing and like started writing songs, and I went to I went, you know I remember going to going to San Diego and hanging out with John and like like trying a couple of songs and just. Record some, we recorded some songs in Philadelphia. I think I think Six Wave Hold Down was recorded there. Yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of the the hitty song from the, from the record. Um, it's a good tune. Yeah, we just you know, and then we recorded the rest of it in San Diego. And like it's just, uh, just, just trying to like see if we got still got some uh, something worth listening to. I don't know. Just like. And I, I think, like, considering it's a bunch of old dudes, like, like it's, it's, it, it isn't that. It's pretty I mean, it's pretty great even if it's not a bunch of old dudes. But, I mean, I think it, I think it holds its own along with the entire catalog, which is there's no weak links, as far as I'm concerned. It's all pretty great. And uh, Well, yeah. that well that's, well, thank you. That, well, that's what you want. I mean, I mean, you don't want to be, like, I don't know. I, I got to see like the Buzzcocks like I, I think in Spain like you know, like uh, not long before Pichelli died or something. I was like I was like it's pretty good, but it was like it was like it just it just seemed like pure like nostalgia. Nostalgia act, yeah, because it's like oh they're gonna play what you know what do I get? They're gonna play. Uh, but I also got to see I also got to see Wire at the Casbah. Mm-hmm. It was like forty people 
there. So I got, I'm like right up on top of wire, watching wire play. And it, it was most, I think the only person I was missing was, uh, uh, what's the guitar player's name? Uh, uh, Colin he, Newman? No, he was there. Uh, Colin Newman, the bass player, uh, 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 and the drummer Rumpet go to bed. Uh, with the, Graham Lewis. Yep, right, like right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. One of the most intense rock and roll personages and or whatever, what you, uh, yeah and, and personas and, and like and a persona presence too guy. just yeah like, oh just just yeah. like that guy's that guy's like that guy's like uh super crazy bruce gilbert i was thinking bruce gilbert he used to play guitar. bruce gilbert <laughs> yeah he, he wasn't there he wasn't there he wasn't there but every every but the, the rest uh he had someone else but the rest of the uh it was, it was wire and and, yeah. and they played wire songs and they like and wire and they had like Colin Newman had like a an iPad it was mounted onto like a mic <laughs> like a like a like a yeah like a sort the, of like hardware the stand or whatever yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> so he would just pull up the lyrics and read them off of the, and I thought if this is if this is anybody at wire this would be totally lame <laughs> <laughs> right, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't fly. But yeah. with wire, it wasn't. It's just like the wire. Just like wire is a a real living band. They they are they that they, they don't. They're not just nostalgia. They 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 play. They care. They 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 feel as passionate about maybe not as passionate. They're not. They're the old men. But like but but they but they definitely. It's a real band. It's a real living thing. It's not just like it's not just like a, we're not like, like, you know, like. Did you ever hear that record? Perform the, the oldies. What, that, what's that? That record send they did in like a like two thousand like three or something. Um, I know. I, I I I. It's hard to keep with that. Keep up with. It's hard to keep the solo it. projects. It's hard, yeah. it's hard to keep with all this stuff. Like sometimes people will send to me and I'll be like, okay. Grand Lynn was solo record. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, so the reason why I bring it up is because for me, like, and it's usually like it's usually like this is pretty cool, but like I was like, eh. like there's a lot yeah. of stuff on that record send that like is a I think it's like a compilation of EPs and stuff like that, but like it's like as good as like Chairs Missing or like Pink Black. Where I'm like, fuck yeah, like these guys like this has it no is. right what's to be this good. Again? What's it called again? What's it called send. again? Send. Send. Okay. Yeah. Dude, I'll listen. I mean, it's as good as Chairs Missing. I mean, like up there, you know, it's it's like I would, it's, it certainly beats all that, like you know, bells and cup and like manscape and all that kind of like regrettable. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'll I'll check it out. I mean, I send. Okay, I'll 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 check it out. I mean, I I root for wire. I mean, like, wire is like. Yeah, it's awesome. never bad. It's all it's always interesting. And there's a record called Change Becomes Us. It's pretty interesting, but that's all old songs that I guess they abandoned way back when. And okay, back I never heard that either. I'll so. check that out. I I never I I don't. I just I grew for this band. I, I love this band. I think it's great. Um, I was such a privilege to like actually get to be able to like stand in front. Of him. You know who else was a really privilege to take the stand in front of was fucking Robin Hitchcock. I got to He's I got to see it. Yeah. I got to see him like a couple times just just playing his just playing his guitar. It's him, and like uh, it was that same level. Just like just like actually more. Robin Hitchcock was better than Wire. Uh, he, he's he's he's. He, I laughed. I cried. I just up um, <laughs> It's a powerful dude, man. Like no, it was, it was amazing. Like everything he's everything that came out of his mouth was just, just like, oh my god, this guy's just a genius, man. He's just so great. It's, it's like that guy's that guy definitely. Man, that guy's incredible. So one one of the last things, and having let not much to do with uh robin hitchcock but you did a thing i think it was a, what's that a tumblr or something that like uh you had sort of like this uh punk rock flyers like a history of like beautiful oh, failures yeah. basically <laughs> like here's how this sucks but how it's awesome at the same time i thought it was the okay. coolest series i thought it was like so cool okay so what happened with that this is my one of my my two forays into like social media <laughs> whatever right yeah yeah but, but like, okay, so, so so basically, what happened was I saw this this guy's site, and they had like all these uh, sort of very sort of very clean, uh, all Helvetica like uh, like uh, like a graphic knockoffs, not knockoffs, but like a, sort of flyers from 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 classic punk shit, like minus where black black old classic, but all yeah yeah. 
Right, but I'll have that I'll type. The whole thing was like it was like it was very well done. Um, because Helvetica is, is the Swiss typeface. That's their that's their invention. And I was just, but I but I was also like, I was also like, this so misses the spirit of the entire thing. And then then I found a bunch of flyers from from the actual shows and from just from shows in San Diego. And there's the flyers are so fucking lousy. They're just they're just. They're, they they could not be uglier. They're just so bad, and I, I'm certainly guilty of making lots and lots of really bad punk art, really bad. And I and I, I was like, this is what this is about. It's like this. So it, it's like it was almost like historical revision with me. Like it's like oh, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like it's like they they try to it was like cleaning up this this really organic, messy, stupid thing and making it and making it like uh like like it was something to be put on a pedestal right. and not you, right. you know what i mean it, it, yeah. it, was just, it, it wasn't like that it was that, that these things are like that it, it's it's uh they're organic and ugly and weird and and punk rock i have more negative memories about it than i do have positive ones it's like it's but i still love it because that's, that's my people. That's all I have, you know? That's, that's, that's all I got. Well, for me, what, one of the things I loved about that was that it kind of just made me sort of examine something that... It's not that I never thought about it, but I never quite thought about it in a way that... Yeah, you, know, you were just, like, pointing it out, like, not in, like, forensic detail or anything, but it was like, hey, look at this. Yeah, you know, like, this is... Like, there was the love show through. Right, but it was like not like. We talking about this is what I just said. Yeah. Oh well, I'm just I I mean I'm just it's just like it was. It's life. It's like it's a messy, dumb thing, and I, I just I just don't like 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 people cleaning it up and making it look 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 at like look like it was some. Glossy. Like I don't know, like it's like like it's like history. I don't know. It's 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 just it just it just, it just, it just bugged me. Um, that. All oh, it's probably just proof in the internet, but like, um, I uh, I didn't like that. Um, just because I knew I knew what it really was, and it wasn't it wasn't like Helvetica. It was like, yeah, I I like that perspective. Rub on letters, maybe at best. Yeah, yeah. And like, and then like it it, it, it was just a, the whole thing was a mess, and, and it's uh, that's that was kind of the beauty of it. I liked it. I thought it was really cool, man. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, and I thought it was cool because it came out from perspective of not only someone that would know, but someone that has like a, a sense of aesthetic to it. But then also, you know, provided context, and yeah, it was cool. Well, it was, I, 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 well, it's it's like it's it's like it's like tough to like separate this like this this thing from its the wheat from the chaff, as it were. Like you'd like your uh, it wasn't all wheat. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was mostly yeah, yeah. chaff. It was mostly chaff. It was mostly chaff, and there was a little weed in there sometimes. Like you can, like you know, like, like a rat, and you like dig out the the weed from the. Uh, um, and I have you know great memories of all these things, and like, and I'm sure that people are still. I hope people are like you know, doing something cool now or whatever. I'm sure they are. But I'm too old to know. Um, too old to be included, but. I just don't like when people, when when uh, when like uh, things like that are sterilized. You know what I mean? I do. It's like uh, it's wrong. It's not true. Well, Rick, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for for doing it, man. This is this is uh this has been a blast. It's great having you. A blast, huh? It is. <laughs> I mean that earnestly. Come on, man. <laughs> this this is this has been a good time. I uh, I. I'm really honored to have you on. Oh, cool. Well, I'm honored to be here, and uh, can I do it again? So, so one last thing. This is a can question. It's the only thing I ever ask people that is a can like question, question, right? It's a, it's a last thing I ask. You can choose to interpret it however you like, but why do you do what you do? <laughs> why do I do what I do? Oh, I don't think Spanish. 
para entretenerme. <laughs> you know what that means? I don't. To entertain myself. Oh. Rick Froberg, thanks so much, man. Come on, intro. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the I'll see you in the apocalypse, man. <laughs> Sounds good, brother. All right, later, days. Take care, man. Ah, uh, there he goes! Rick goddamn Froberg.
while for you. A little bank called Drive Like Jehu. Perhaps you heard of them. <laughs> Featuring my guest Rick Froberg. Doing some singing, a little bit of guitar, despite his uh, modesty towards all that. Uh, before that, we had some Obits, two-headed coin, underrated band. Like the, like those guys a lot. And before that, we had uh, the first two songs of the first Hot Stinks record, uh, Automatic Midnight, and uh, a little song after all. Automatic Midnight. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. My bad, y'all. Some show. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, if, credit, if credit is what matters, I'll take credit and then automatic midnight. My bad. The name of the show is Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you so much for listening to it. Thank you so much, Rick Froberg, for coming on the show. The only social media he's on is Instagram, and it's great. So if you are on Instagram, get to it. Uh, Rick underscore Froberg. So, obviously he's a visual artist. So worth it. Signing off. Mr. and Mrs. America. All the ships at sea. Yeah, name of the show is Code Neutron's Protonic Reversal. The show airs on Radio Nope. Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. ProtonicReversal.com for the archives. 50, watts of Patreon.com slash ProtonicReversal uh, to get episodes sooner. $1 a month will get you there. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. Rick Sonia, you're coming in for a third round next episode, so that should be fun. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to the show, sharing it around, and if it helps people now? find it. Appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Dark and Take it easy. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now?
leaves the transmitter, circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? broadcasting if there's no one there to receive it's the end of radio as we come to the close of our broadcast Radio.